Gators will receive the kick to start this ball game. Eli Williams, a senior out of Milton, among those playing his last game in the Swamp, is on the near side, and Damon Bo Carroll to the high side, but the kicker, Sebastian Janikowski, is capable of kicking the ball into the stands on a fly. And I'm not kidding, it should only be about an 83 yard kick. He can kick it that far, we'll see if he does. In warm-ups, he kicked one off that went between the uprights. That's 75 yards. Not a good kick, it's a low, low driving kick, bounces a couple of times, fielded by Bo Carroll, who stumbles, looking for some running room, doesn't find much. He's up to about the 17 or 18 yard line. David Warren, a freshman defensive end out of Tyler, Texas, one of the most highly recruited defensive players in the country a year ago is the guy. Noah Brindice leads the Florida Gators to the field. His last game in the swamp, he finishes his regular season career and he's glad it's in front of friendly fans. Uh, it's just, you know, what, what more can you say about the swamp? It's the, it's the best place to play college football in the country and, uh, you know, I'd be lying if I told you I wasn't going to probably have a tear or two in my eyes uh, the last time that I get to run out of that tunnel. Gators at the 17-yard line. Fred Taylor has been the guy, but they'll throw on first down. Brindice, trailing route, dragging across. Travis McGriff up to about the 24-yard line. Carante Cody, a freshman. Tay Cody, he goes by, makes the catch, but Florida picks up seven on their first play of the ball game. Coming into the game, Noah Brindice closing in on 600 yards, six touchdowns, and three interceptions. Noah checks out, and Doug Johnson checks in. So after one play, the Florida Gators make a quarterback change. Johnson, the sophomore from Buholtz, he was the guy early in the year. Fred Taylor looking for running room, gets about a yard to the 25-yard line. It'll be third down and a long two for the Florida Gators. The Gators on offense this afternoon against the nation's third-ranked defense and total defense. Taylor and Frazier in the backcourt. Jamie Richardson, a guy who has caught seven touchdown passes. Florida could use a big play out of him along with tight end Taurus Ross. And up front, Ryan Kalick starts at left guard. Wiley Rich, the center, is back in the starting lineup. And Noah Brindice is back behind center on third down. Florida State jumps. The nose guard, Jerry Johnson, put his hands on Wiley Rich. Three flags are down, and I guess two out of three is all you need to get the call to go your way. Guard the foul. Offside, on the defense. Five yards, first down. So Terry McCauley gets us the call. It's offside on Florida State, and the Gators will have the ball at the 30-yard line. Jerry Johnson jumps. He's a sophomore from Fort Pierce Central. So the Gators, instead of hand signals, may be telling the quarterback to play and letting him run in to run the next snap. Out of the shotgun from the 30-yard line. Johnson back, throws it to the outside and is juggling, catch is made. Jacquez Green makes the catch in Florida State territory. And just a tremendous acrobatic catch by Jacquez Green. And you see why early on as he goes up against Tay Cody, Cody was in good position, but Jacquez went up and just took the ball away. Great concentration as he goes through a juggling act. Now watch this concentration as the ball is falling. He keeps his eyes on it, comes down, makes a diving catch. Tremendous effort by Jacquez Green. That is the 55th catch of the season for Quez, and it puts him up over 900 yards on the season. Brindice checks in, still in the shotgun, with the nose of the ball inside Seminole territory. They go with the inside handoff. Taylor's got running room. Fred Taylor's got a first down out of bounds near the 37-yard line. Shevin Smith runs him out of bound for Florida State. Let's check out that Seminoles defense up front. Julian Pittman and Johnson. Wadsworth and Spires at the defensive ends have combined for 26 quarterback sacks. Probably the best linebacking core in America. Sam Cowart, Daryl Bush, and Lamont Green. Cowart, one of the three finalists for the Butkus Award. And the secondary improved over last year. Tay Cody, a big reason why. Johnson now in the Florida lineup. The ball on the 37. Doug looking deep, throws deep, Jacquez Green a little too strong. He had gotten inside Samari Roll. Well, he had a step on him, and Jacquez just led him a little too much. And ironically, with the different quarterbacking, 
situation is we take another look at Jacquez on a post pattern. He turns Samari all the way around, and the ball is just slightly on this overthrown. But this is what the Gators have got to do. They've got to keep this defense off balance by continuing to mix it up. Well, you can't keep them any more in balance than mixing up your quarterbacks on them. Bartle run it on second down, nothing there. Taylor hit by Coward in the hole, falls forward to get back to the line of scrimmage, might have picked up a foot. Sam Coward out of Mandarin. It's amazing that a year ago he had had major reconstructive knee surgery. Now he's one of the truly outstanding linebackers in college football. Well, not only one of the truly outstanding linebackers in college football, but a tremendous leader for the Seminole defense as he's come back and he leads his team in tackles and once again steps up able to fill the hole holding Taylor to no game. Doug Johnson on the year 20 touchdowns 12 interceptions got those 20 TDs the first five games of the year when the Gator offense was playing pretty darn well throws the slant Richardson goes down to make the catch at the 30 but that's short of a first down by three yards and a 47 yard field goal or do you go for it on fourth down gee I wonder. Well, look, looks like the head ball coach has made a decision and as we see Quesi, uh, Jacquez Green go back on the field. This is just a good job by Jamie Richardson of making sure the catch as he goes down, makes the catch instead of trying to make a spectacular catch. He just makes the catch. Well, Florida will call timeout to decide what play and which quarterback is going to run it with 11.37 to go in the opening quarter. Florida and Florida State. Receivers go in. This time the quarterbacks are bringing in the plays. And let's see what the play is on fourth and three. Quick pitch to the outside. Taylor, they go with a reverse. Quez is going to throw it. Doug Johnson's wide open. Johnson inside the 15 of the 12-yard line. Another spectacular play called by Steve Spurrier as he comes with a little razzle-dazzle. And there's that man again, Jock Quez Green, as he takes a reverse pitch stops and throws it back to the quarterback for a first down. In addition, it appears Florida State got a late hit on the tackle. And that personal foul will give Florida first and goal down around the eight yard line. Well, Larry, this is the way we grow up playing football. Just a little razzle dazzle, throw it all over the field and have some fun. And I can tell you, these Gators are having fun. You know, this is, the, without a doubt, a playground play that works to perfection. Well, I'm glad you grew up playing football like that. I grew up blocking for guys that were a lot faster. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't block much because it wasn't any fun. The head coach has the ball moving. First and goal for Florida inside the seven-yard line. On the draw, it's Taylor. Taylor's got to the five and close to the three-yard line. Daryl Bush and Sam Howard make the stop along with Chevin Smith, but Florida gets about half what they need to get on the scoreboard. Offensive, offensive line doing a super job of controlling that Seminole defensive line. Good block by Rod Frazier leading up into the hole. Excellent running by Taylor, just reading ahead of the would-be blockers. Well, one thing you want to do when you're struggling offensively is have early success and build some confidence. The Gator offense is doing that on this drive. Can they cash it in? Straight ahead, Taylor to the goal line, touchdown! Not hit until he reached the goal line, and just a tremendous job of blocking by that right side. Ryan Taylor, Cheston Blackshear, Mo Collins, and the tight end, Terrence Ross, are blowing that Seminole defensive line back into the end zone. And watch the lead block by Rod Frazier as he just does a super job of meeting the linebacker head on, allowing Taylor to bust into the end zone. Frazier shaken up on that play, getting medical attention down around the two-yard line. Checking out his ankle, Rod Frazier, a redshirt freshman out of Bradenton, Manatee. He redshirts the year the Gators win a national championship. The year before that, he was a high school senior when his brother Tommy Frazier led Nebraska over the Gators for a national title. So Rod Frazier with a big block there on Sam Cowart. The outstanding middle backer for Florida State. Just a good job of lead blocking in there by Frazier. Stymieing the linebacker, Coward, giving Taylor plenty of room to get into the end zone and turn his ankle in the process. It really didn't seem like anything happened on the play, but and it's not where he went down. He actually got up and then apparently went right back down. So the medical staff works on the injured leg of the Florida fullback, Rod Frazier. 
He's an important part of this offense, and not because he carries the ball, but Florida's a much better team when they run. When he's on the field, they run better. And Rod Frazier has become very important since the injury to Terry Jackson. Well, well any time you've got a tailback that lines up seven and a half yards deep, the fullback has to be a tremendous blocker because the play takes so long to get into the hole, and you like to run a lot of isolation plays from that eye backfield, so your fullback is critical. Well, the Gators came right out and drove it 83 yards to get in the end zone. Collins Cooper misses the extra point. We'll see if that's important as the game goes on. The Gators missed an extra point in the South Carolina game. For Collins Cooper, that is his sixth missed extra point this season, and that is costly. Timeout in the swap. 10.45 to play. Opening quarter, the Gators go the length of the field to take a 6-0 lead. The Gators go 83 yards and on fourth and three, a typical conservative play to get that first down. Right, Nat? <laughs> Very conservative. As you can see on this reverse, the reverse had no chance, but it was all set up to get the ball to Doug Johnson, and he does what all great runners do, go down and get punished as he goes out of bounds. <laughs> Well, that punishment, the forearm from Shevin Smith was a penalty that helped Florida go on in for the touchdown. Despite the missed extra point, the Gators do enjoy a 6-0 advantage as Robbie Stevenson gets set to kick off. Robbie was trying to aim his kicks last week in Columbia, South Carolina. I think he's just going to drill this one. Yes, he did. Driving kick, five, six, eight yards deep, and they will not bring it out. Jermaine Stringer, a sophomore from suburban Atlanta, is not coming out with that one, and Florida State will go on offense from the 20-yard line. The Gator defense, that's the unit being looked to today to have a big day. Mike Moten and Reggie McGrew, Willie Rogers and Willie Cohens, but we'll see so many guys up front through the course of the day. Javon Curse, he is so disruptive. Watch number 42, along with Rutledge and Thomas in the linebacking core. And back in the secondary, a big day for Fred Weary and Eli Williams as they match up with two of the best in the country, E.G. Green and Peter Warwick of Florida State. Thad Busby at the controls of the Seminole offense. They look to throw first down. He's got his man out in the flat. Not much there fighting forward. Travis Miner gets uh, maybe six yards. Nice job fighting through the tacklers to make six out of what looked like not very much. Thad Busby averaging over 300 yards per game and a great three to one touchdown to interception ratio. In fact, Thad Busby has only lost one game in two years, that of course being the Sugar Bowl and the National Championship Showdown. He's got some great weapons to work with, including that tailback Miner who caught the first pass. On second down, running from trouble, he throws high and complete. Trying to get it to E.G. Green. Florida had pretty good coverage, and the ball was thrown high and incomplete. It'll be third down and four. The rest of the offense, Khalid Abdullah, much like the Gator fullback, he's there to block primarily. Melvin Pearsall, a senior, has had an outstanding season at tight end with 27 catches. He is a big weapon, especially in situations like this, third and four. And up front, a pretty young offensive line. Two seniors, two freshmen, and a sophomore. That group has gotten better all year long. Kevin Long, the guy in the middle, really the key. The best lineman, Trey Thomas, a very possible first-round draft pick. We've got a whistle and a timeout called in the Gator secondary. Florida confused on its coverage on third and four. And five minutes, five seconds into this ball game, Florida has already used two timeouts, one on offense and one on defense. So we'll take a breather. We'll see what Florida State does on third and four when we return to the swamp after these were And four, Florida State will run out of the shotgun. They put Miner in motion. Under pressure, Busby, quarterback draw, won't get there. Diving ankle tackle by Reggie McGrew. It's fourth down. Well, Larry, that was a well-designed play by the Seminoles as they, they brought the tailback out, made the linebacker move, and then tried to come with a quarterback draw. But Reggie McGrew was able to get penetration and then react up, keeping vision on the quarterback, and come down with the tackle. Great defensive play by Reggie McGrew. Jamie Richardson deep to return the punt. Jacquez Green is up on the line to try to get after it. Cottrell, the freshman, gets the kickoff. Green did not come close. Good kick. 
Richardson fields at the 23-yard line. He's got five. He's got ten, and that's all he's got. He's got company. Lavernius Coles in on the tackle for the Florida State coverage, along with Demetro Stevens, a junior linebacker out of Georgia. 49 yards on the kick, a 10-yard return, and Florida gets its second offensive opportunity with about 15 yards, 16 yards better field position than the last one. Well, the stats guys are going nuts with this quarterback situation. I promise you that. Well, trying to keep track of which quarterback threw which pass to well. Of course, Doug Johnson's already caught a pass, not only thrown one. And we knew that uh, without a doubt that Steve Spurrier would have come up with a plan that would make it interesting. Johnson out of the shotgun. Three receivers wide to the right. Doug sets up and fires to Quez Green. Diving, did he get it? Looks like he did at the 44. It'll be a Florida first down pickup of 11 yards on the play. Samari Roll with the coverage for Florida State. And what we're seeing so far from this Gator football team is guys standing up and making plays as this is not a perfectly thrown ball, but Quezzy comes back, does a good job of getting his hands underneath the football, making sure of the catch. Jacquez came in with 54 catches for 879. He has added to that already today with a couple of receptions for 31. On first down. And the whistles blow. Probably a false start on the offensive line. Should create a first and 15 situation. Now, one of the advantages Florida's getting out of their quarterback shuffle is a lot of times this year we've seen confusion over the hand signals and bad communication and such like that. That's no longer a factor when the head coach is whispering the play into the guy who's going to run it. But, but even more so, he's telling him What's the purpose of the play? What he's looking for? And if I call this play, I want you to look down the middle, but if it's not there, I want you to come off to the back of the flat right away. So it's not a guessing point when, as when you give the hand signals and he has to anticipate what the coach wants. Well, if it keeps working this well, he may, may use it next year with <laughs> Doug Johnson and Jesse Palmer and Tim Olmstead. Okay, Doug, you've got first down this week. <laughs> first and 15, under pressure, Johnson throws in a hurry, incomplete. That's one of those incompletions that there's nothing wrong with. Under pressure, he didn't take the sack and he didn't force it. There is a flag on the play, apparently. Well, this time he does the, the right thing. He doesn't throw the ball down the middle of the field. Cowers come totally free. He gets rid of the football and throws it outside, where if his guy can't catch it, no one can. Well, Florida's called for offensive pass interference, and I've got to question that because who could have caught that pass? Who could have been interfered with? It's a 15-yard penalty. That's the number one penalty on an offense is offensive pass interference. And I'm sure the head coach is saying, I see Quez fighting off. Nothing wrong with that. Well, that's just a bad call. You know, you, you've got the right to protect yourself. And the guy's got his hands up. You're just trying to get him off you. Uh, the, the reason they call it, though, it's right at the breaking point. Florida State jumping around, and they'll call Florida for a false start. And the Gators will have a first and 35 coming up. A five-yard false start, a 15-yard offensive pass interference, and a five-yard false start is going to move the Gators back to the 20-yard line. And this is not what you want to do. You get the ball in great field position, and, you know, you give back 25, 30 yards, and penalties going the wrong way. And there you see the false start as you see Jock West Green get ready to get off the line of scrimmage. And... Uh, you know, he's got to look in at the football. He, he can't anticipate the snap count. He's got to see the ball move. Let's see. What are your play calling options with first and 35? You have three chances to get it. you got to get about 12 yards per play. Well, that won't be 12. Shoot top catch by Quez Green. That will be a gain of a yard or two. In fact, he dove forward, and since he gave up the forward progress, he gives up those two yards. So it will be a gain of one to the 21. But I still like what I'm seeing out of Doug Johnson. He's not throwing the ball down the middle of the field. He's not throwing it into traffic. He's throwing it outside where if his guy cannot catch it, then it will go incomplete. Florida substitutes Brindice back into the lineup. Richardson and Quez Green to the bottom of your screen. Travis McGriff wide to the left to the top of the screen on second down in a long way. Fred Taylor has got five, about eight yards. Fred Taylor up to the 28-yard line. And that'll bring up a routine, a basic third and 27 type situation. <laughs> and 
And you can believe that Steve Spurrier has a play in his playbook that's set to go for 27 yards. Whether he will try it at this time or whether he will just continue to try and get field position as he did on the first two plays and kick it away and allow his defense to play, play good, solid defense, backing the Seminole team up. Great day for Fred Taylor last week in Columbia, South Carolina. 133 of that in the second half. Gators with a third and very long. Johnson will throw deep down the sideline. Quez Green goes up, can't get it. Good coverage, but again, thrown to the outside where the safety could not get there. So again, that an uh, improvement in Doug Johnson. And some people say, how can you improve throwing incomplete passes? But he, that's a good incompletion as well. Well, you're, you're giving yourself a chance to make the play. You're throwing it high and outside. You've got a leaper in Jacquez Green that can go up and take the ball away. And he throws it far enough outside that if Quezzy can't get it, the, the weak safety is not a factor. Dexter Jackson, number 11, closing on the play, but could not get a shot at the football. Florida has to punt from its own 29-yard line. Now, Tyrone Baker in motion to try to get free of the early coverage. Low, wobbly kick, played on one. Hop and down you go right there. One of the most dangerous punt returners in America, Peter Warwick, got to meet Tony George up close and personal. And Warwick did a good job of feeling the football after the bounce. But Tony George was able to fight off a blocker and make the tackle before he could get turned up field. Big crowd here at the swap. The phone was ringing all week. Know anybody with a couple of extra tickets? Know how to annoy people with that? Oh, if you'd only called five minutes ago. That's my answer every time. Well, I just told them to get in line. <laughs> I just sold 20 of them at face value. <laughs> Sorry. Second opportunity for Florida State. Busby under pressure, runs away from Gurley, still on the run, and he'll throw it incomplete. That ball lands about 15 yards short of the nearest eligible receiver, but in line with one guy, which is close enough to avoid the intentional grounding. Well, let's call it like it is. He got away with one at that particular <laughs> time because there were three Gators around this football as he got tremendous pressure, as you can see, Johnny Rutledge in, the, in his face, but there was no Seminole receiver anywhere near the football. The Gators were offside on the play. And so despite all that and avoiding the grounding, it ends up being a five-yard pickup. First and five for Florida State at the 36-yard line. Bob Stoops' defense geared up to deal with some serious weapons. Bad Busby with over 3,000 yards. E.G. Green and Peter Warwick who have combined to catch passes for over 1,800 and a great freshman tailback in Travis Miner. On first and five, Busby flushed out of the pocket, will run with it. He's got the first down and more up to the 43. Tony George ends up on the tackle for the Gators. And that's not bad for the Gators. If, if you can force this quarterback to run with the football and take some punishment, you know, it'll it'll wear big in the second half or in the fourth quarter. And he's getting out of there, not because it's a draw, because the Gators are coming at him as we see the, <laughs> the umpire getting ran over. Um, you, you see that he has to get out of there because Johnny Rutledge applies the pressure. William Wampler Jr., that is the umpire. You think you want to be a football official, watch that play a few more times. E.G. Green makes the catch. Tico Brown puts a hat on him right away after a gain of just about a yard. Well, here we see Tico Brown doing what good free safeties do. Read the quarterback eyes, react up, make a short tackle as he hits E.G. Green for a two-yard gain. Avernius Coles checks in for Florida State in a three-wide receiver alignment. The Gators with five on the line of scrimmage. And they're all coming after Busby. He gets it to his running back. Miner makes one man miss and then goes forward to about the 50 yard line before he's stopped by Eli Williams. He noses the ball into Florida territory where it'll be third down and about a yard and a half. Well, Travis Miner is a very elusive little running back and Mike Harris has a shot at him. And here you got to break down and make the short tackle. You can't go for the big hit because this guy's just too strong and elusive. Reminds you a lot of Warwick Dunn. A bigger version of Warwick for sure. Travis Miner from the same school, Baton Rouge Catholic High School. Florida State needs to get just shy of the 47 on third down. 
Busby from the pocket throws in and out of the hands of Melvin Pearsall. He was there and he was open, but he did not make the catch and it's fourth down. Well, Thad Busby had what he was looking for. He got Pearsall wide open, but Melvin Pearsall was not able to come down with the catch. As he was getting pressure, Thad Busby was able to step up and deliver the football to its big tight end. And that's a catchable ball. I think he took his eyes off it, Larry. Tico Brown running into the picture at the end. You saw Mike Peterson put the little jam on Pearsall originally. He turned around and that ball was there. He didn't have a great deal of time to react. Florida State to punt. This is Keith Cottrell. He's a freshman. And the catch is made at the 19-yard line by Jacquez Green. So a 32-yard punt. Well, he pinned Florida inside the 20, but I think he was hoping for a little bit more than that. Well, Florida, without a doubt, will take that any day. You know, you you He's on hand, fired up about this one as they always are. The stadium packed, no matter who the opponent, but a little more lively when it's this opponent. Taylor trying to get outside, hit from behind, fumbles. It's picked up by Sam Coward. Touchdown, Florida State. Lamont Green came from the backside. Taylor thought he was blocked. He was not. Green knocked it loose, and Coward runs it in, and that's that Florida State linebacking court going to work. And that's what that shows you what speed will do, Larry. Lamont Green comes all the way from the backside, and what happens here is Fred Taylor starts to hit it up inside the tackle. He bounces outside, and Green comes all the way from the backside, is able to strip it out as he makes the tackle. Here's another look at it. He bounces outside, and Green comes from the backside, strips it out, and Coward picks it up, runs it in for a touchdown. Now Janikowski to tie the game, kicks the extra point. The difference between these teams at the moment, an extra point. Florida missed its kick. Florida State made its kick. Four minutes, 32 seconds to play. First quarter in the swamp at Ben Hill Griffin Stadium, Florida Field. The Seminoles have taken the lead on the Gators. Stay with us. Much more in Stadium, Florida Field. 4.32 to go. Opening quarter, Florida drives 83 yards for a touchdown. Florida State scores on a fumble recovery. The extra point gives the Seminoles a one-point lead. It's the second touchdown of the season for that man, Sam Coward, who ran a fumble in for a touchdown against Duke earlier in the season. And the Butkus Award finalist will return to the field as Florida goes on offense following the kickoff going through the end zone. Taurus Ross a little shaken up for the Gators on their kick return unit even though the ball did not come out of the end zone. And so, but he will stay in the ball game. Started out then, says he's fine, he's going to stay in there. Doug Johnson as the Gators alternate quarterbacks on every play using the quarterbacks rather than the signal men to get the plays in although right now Noah Brindice on the sideline does not have his helmet on Johnson back to throw under pressure drops it off to Taylor Fred gets one block holding will be called this play is coming back Fred Taylor picks up about 30 yards, but they're going to call holding on a Gator receiver, and that will undo the play. It looked like Eugene McCaslin out in front of the play was making the block for Florida. Tough break for the Gators. Well, that's a very, very tough call, and you know what you always question with the officials, if they see the entire play where the block started and how it finished up instead of just seeing the end of it. And uh, you know we have not had a chance to look at it, but I would question the call. Starting out, it looked like the like McCaslin had a shot, had good position. He's blocking on Cower, and it doesn't look like any holding there. It looked like he's he just maintained his block and pushed him around the re, the uh, receiver, Fred Taylor. That was a huge gain for Florida. Instead, it back at the 12-yard line. Bo Carroll is in at tailback. Noah Brindis back at quarterback on first down penalties are really hurting the Gators. Carroll trying to find a quick seam, doesn't, and lost a yard. Greg Spires knifes in from his right defensive end spot to make the hit for the Florida State defense. Spires, a senior from Cape Coral Mariner High School. In fact, earlier this week, Noah Brindise told the story of how Spires gave him a concussion when they were both in high school. Well, 
I, I, that might have happened in high school, but knowing the tough man that Noel Brandeis is, that will have no effect on him playing the day against Greg Spires. Brandeis back to the sideline. Doug Johnson is in on second and long. Gator quarterback gets it to Taylor. Taylor fumbles again. Loose ball, and Florida State's got it at the 19-yard line. Fred Taylor, who has been the Gator offense for the past couple of weeks, has coughed it up twice inside the Gator 20. And this is just Fred Taylor struggling, trying to pick up extra yardage, and sometimes that's what happened. You know, the second guy in, third guy in, is the guy that always shakes it low, so the guy that's coming from behind, as we see Fred Taylor toss up the football again. Good job of catching the football, turning up field, and there comes the second guy in, Shevin Smith, that shakes it loose. You saw McCaslin's left arm got pinned. He would have recovered it if he could have gotten his left arm out there. But he couldn't do it. Now the Gator defense tries to make a stand with the ball just inside the 20-yard line. Miner goes in motion. Busby fires on the slant, juggled incomplete. Lavernius Coles tried to make the catch. And Rod Grady, a redshirt freshman, he's a kid from the state of Georgia, a high school player in Cuthbert, Georgia. And he's out there getting playing time in the Florida secondary. He's going to be a good one. He's a big kid for the defensive backfield, about 6'1 and a half, 200 pounder. But has, seems to have good instincts for the game. Real good instincts, has a good break on the football once it's in the air. So it's second down and 10. Crowd very loud here in the swamp. Busby fires, he's got his man on a little drag route and down he goes. E.G. Green collared by Reggie McGrew. Very late flag from the back judge. I have no idea what that might be. But the Florida State players are applauding. This is after the play was over and he was 25 yards from it and three officials closer called nothing. That's a face mask called against the Gators. And the penalties are adding up. Well, this is just unbelievable. Well, there's no face mask at all. That's a horrendous call by and the it, back judge. And that it's inexcusable. He's 25 yards from the play and three guys are closer. Well, I would not like to say that these are ACC officials, but uh, they are. for the team that has, uh, has led the ACC in penalties versus them, it's show sure going the other way. And this is just an excellent play and tackle by Reggie McGrew as he sees the, the runner coming by him. He just reaches out and snatches him down. Never touched the face mask. So instead of third down and about six, it's second down and about two. Miner is buried. It'll be third down and a little over a yard. Keith Kelsey in on the tackle defensively for the Florida Gators. The penalties adding up early for the Florida Gators in this contest. They've been flagged a half dozen times already for 43 yards in the opening quarter. Which is quite amazing because, you know, some of these penalties, the Gators are very guilty of them, but some of them are real shaky calls. When you go back and you look at the, the big call on Fred Taylor's run, is the difference in Florida State getting the ball down here versus the Gators having a shot at taking it in and scoring. That was the holding call on the play, and now Florida State will call timeout. 2.02 left. The play clock was winding down, and... The Seminoles could not decide on a play. So the Gator defense faces its most important play of this opening quarter. Third down and two at the 11-yard line when we return to Ben Hill Griffin Stadium. Turnover as third down. The Florida defense digs in. FSU must get just shy of the nine-yard line. Buzzy on the slant throws as the catch. He dropped it. It's either fumbled or incomplete. It's an incomplete pass. Damian Harrell had the ball, and he was racked up by the Florida secondary. The ball came out. Hopefully that leg is not hurt, but he reached for his right knee and is still on the ground. The ball is ruled an incomplete pass. Let's take another look. Just a very simple slant route. He gets inside position on the corner. Ball's thrown right there, but he gets his leg bent back. As you see, three Gators, Eli, Keith Kelsey, Tico Brown all coming in to shake the ball loose, and you see him grab his knee, and let's hope it's not something serious. Boy, it buckled inward. Even before the hit came, really, it was just as he was about to get hit. He planted his right foot, and his knee buckled inward. And that is one, that's a place you don't want it to buckle. So hopefully, just a sprain or something. Damian Harrell for Florida State, the wide receiver, is a 
senior. He's out of Miami, went to San Francisco Community College before transferring to Florida State. Looks like the young man's going to be able to get up with a little help. Billy Donovan's Gator basketball team will host Coastal Carolina on Saturday, November 29th at 4 o'clock in the O'Connell Center. For tickets, call 352-375-GO-UF. Remember, UF students, you get in free all season long with a Gator One car. That's Gator basketball next Saturday. That's also a game you'll get to see right here on Sunshine Network. Bill Koss and Mark Wise will join me for the call on that one. So if you can't be in the O-Dome, we hope you'll be in front of the set. Florida State will go for the field goal from 29 yards out for Sebastian Janikowski. It's certainly going to be long enough, and it is good. So the Seminoles score a touchdown on a fumble and turn the other touch fumble into a field goal. Good job by the Gator defense to make Florida State settle for three after the Seminoles got the ball at the Florida 19-yard line. We'll take a short time out. We'll be right back. Good old days when you could yank your helmet off and enjoy a moment. Now they penalize you about <laughs> 45 uh, yards or so you do that. <laughs> uh, you just stole someone's son because you took your helmet off. I mean, it's the, the most ridiculous penalty in college football. Janikowski will kick off. He's just a freshman. Oh, my goodness. Let's see how far this one goes. <laughs> it hit a cameraman two yards beyond the three-yard zone, beyond the end line. That thing went 81 yards in the air. <laughs> <laughs> well, just remember this, Larry. For many, many years, the Seminoles lost to the Hurricanes because of a kicker, and since then, Bobby Bowden said he will always have him a great kicker. Let's go down to the field to Steve. Steve, what's up? A key defensive injury for Florida, Mike Harris. Gainesville Buholtz High School. Florida on first down, and they got that little delay. Damon Carroll's got all kinds of room. Bo Carroll to the 45 and out of bounds at the 46-yard line. Big pickup for 26 yards for Bo Carroll. Gators just did an excellent job, excellent job of sneaking Bo Carroll out of the backfield on a little crossing route. Linebacker gets caught up, uh, Darrell Bush, and then you've got the sprinter going down the sideline. Finally brought down by Dexter Jackson, number 11. Bo Carroll, good receiver. That is his seventh catch, but he averages almost 20 yards per reception. Brindice checks in. Carroll on the draw play. Nowhere to go, and he lost a yard and a half. Darrell Bush, victimized on the pass, gets even on the running play. Darrell Bush, a good football player. Lake Brantley High School in Altamont Springs. Probably would have been a Butkus finalist if, or uh, one of the final three, if not for his teammate, Sam Coward. Right, there you see a good job of Bush shooting the gap, but you know that's part of the problem when you've got those three great linebackers with Green, Bush, and Coward, that uh, it's hard to get the notoriety. Second down and long. Under pressure, Johnson hit as he throws. It goes right into the ground. Good rush up the inside. That was Jerry Johnson, a sophomore from Fort Pierce Central High School, putting on the pressure. Came right up the middle between Wiley Rich and Ryan Kalick. And he's able to beat the double team and is able to hit Doug Johnson just as he releases the football as he tried to go out into the flat with Jacquez Green out there. Boy, you got to slow him down better than that when you got two hats on. Well, the key is, is he just split them. And once you, you split them, uh, you end up using their force against each other to make the play. Third down, the Gators have to get inside the 44, and they won't get in across the 45. They needed 12, and they got maybe a yard. Howard in on the play, along with Corey Simon, Samari Roll, and a host of Florida State Seminoles. So after the big play on the pass to Bo Carroll, the Gators cannot advance the ball and have to punt. Well, this is just the Gators playing for field position. You know, they're hoping that they're able to pop it with Bo Carroll, but if not, they'll line up and punt the ball away because their defense has played tremendous football. If you look at the 10 points that the Seminoles have, it's come because of turnovers on the offensive side. Corey Simon may have re-injured his shoulder on that play. He has had shoulder problems throughout his career, dating back to high school. Florida State with 10 on the line, but not a big rush. A low line drive from Stevenson hits at the, oh, it goes out of bounds short of the 15. 
and they will mark him right at the 21, 22 yard line. <laughs> the side judge spotted it. The referee, what they do is they walk the side judge up the sideline. The referee gives them the angle. They pick the spot, and when they pick the spot, he ran up four more yards. So then he's waving them back. Well, well, that's that's the official saying, wait a minute, you're going a little too far. You know, we, we got to do this thing right. Back up a little bit. Maybe we should maybe we should give these guys the beach ball. There's Stevenson waiting for the punt. Good job of handling a, a little tough snap by Robbie Stevenson. And then he's trying to angle it out down on the sideline and was able to get it out inside the 20. Four seconds to go. This should be the final snap of the first quarter. They fake the draw. Busby hit as he throws, completes it. There's Peter Warwick still on his feet. He is tough to tackle, and he gets across the 35, close to the 37-yard line. It'll be an 18-yard gain of Florida State first down for Peter Warwick on the final play of the opening quarter of the annual Florida-Florida State game on Sunshine Network. The Gators grabbed an early 6-0 lead. FSU on a fumble return for a touchdown and a field goal leads it 10-6. But Florida missed the extra point. Then the Gators turned it over, a fumble by Taylor, picked up and returned for a touchdown by Sam Cowart. The extra point made it 7-6, and another Florida turnover made it a 10-6 ball game when Janikowski kicked the field goal. Florida State ball at the 37-yard line, first down as we begin the second quarter. In the flat, nobody near Travis Miner, but he does a little hesitation, and instead of getting about six on it, he tried to make a bigger play and ends up getting about two. Maybe three. Well, he's a big play performer, and, you know, when you catch the ball out there on first down, you're looking for the home run. You know, if it's third and two, third and three, then you go put your head down and go for it, Larry. But with his ability, I guarantee you, every time he gets the ball in the flat, he's looking for a big play. First half stats dominated by the Florida Gators. Total offense advantage 80 yards for the Gators, but penalties and turnovers, the reason Florida State has the lead. On the draw play, big hole, Miner across midfield to the Florida 48. And there's a couple of cheap shots late, and Mike Harris makes a big, or Mike Peterson made a big mistake and retaliated, and that may make it go both ways. We'll see. The first sign is only against Florida State. Pete got one in the chops and retaliated, and Mike get away with the retaliation after the officials talk it over. We'll see. Well, fortunately enough, the officials seen the first hit. Usually they only see the second, Larry. Play. Personal foul on the offense. Unnecessary roughness. 15 yards from the end of the run. They didn't make the first down. First and 10. Here's another look at it. Let's see who comes in with the cheap shot on Mike Peterson. If you look at the lower left. Now keep it going. It goes, it's after that. That's not it. Let's take another look at it, see if we can see it here from the end zone shot. You know, Mike Peterson will come into your picture, and then after the fact, you'll see Melvin Pearsall deliver an illegal blow to the headgear of Mike Peterson. So because it was dead ball right after the play, it's first and 10, but back at the 36-yard line, it's as if that big run did not take place. And they get it back anyway as... Travis Miner gets about a dozen. Fred Weary makes the tackle. Florida State first down. And Tony George slow getting up. What we're starting to see is they've shown pass so often that now they're, they're running the football. They've got the Gators in a pass rush mode. And Travis Miner is coming right up the middle. Just a good job of tackling by Fred Weary and Tony George as, he, as Tony gets a little banged up. But a good job of open field tackling by Fred Weary while fighting off a blocker. Tony George out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Two interceptions this season in the Gator secondary. Who will ever forget the big one against Peyton Manning early in the season in the Tennessee win? Bob Stoops defense facing quite a challenge. Florida State, one of those combination teams. They've got all the running skill you could want with Miner and Ford and Feaster, although not a lot of experience. And of course, with receivers like Green and Warwick and Stringer and Lavernius Coles and Damian Harrell, boy, I tell you one thing, they can move the football against you and they can do it in a hurry. 
Be sure to tune in to Sunshine Network this Sunday at 1 o'clock. It's the SEC Women's Volleyball Championship game live from Athens, Georgia. The conference title is on the line. Florida has won the tournament title five years in a row. See if they can make it number six at 1 o'clock live right here on Sunshine Network. Tony George leaves the field of play, so Florida has Grady in at the strong safety spot because Mike Harris is also injured. They fake the pitch. Busby under pressure gets it to Pearsall, and he's upended by Tico Brown after a pickup of about eight yards. A little drag route where they break Pearsall across the field, and this FSU football team likes to go to the tight end, as you'll see Pearsall up at 81, big tight end coming into your picture, but a good solid open field tackle by Tico Brown. Hold him to only an eight-yard gain. Melvin Pearsall's 28th reception of the season. Big tight end. He actually was on his high school basketball team at Lake Wales when they were in the state final four. And he wanted a rebound. He got it. Under pressure, Busby runs away from trouble, and then he's dropped. Buck Gurley was closing along with Keith Kelsey, and Busby ends up getting close to first down yardage. He'll be short by about half a yard. Florida's had pretty good pressure on Busby. He has not had many chances to sit back there and look over his options. Yeah, but this was a quarterback draw all the way. They, they run the tailback out of the backfield, hoping to pull the linebacker Javon Kirst, and they try and run it right where that linebacker leaves from, but the defensive line is doing a good job of getting penetration and then reacting to the quarterback and was able to bring him down short of the first down. Gators look for the run on third and very short. Busby sneaks it, and he gets it all the way down to the 40. So he got about two yards on the quarterback sneak. Might have a little bit of a headache. He met hat on hat with a Gator defender, but it's first down Florida State at the Florida 40-yard line. This is the best drive the Seminoles have put together this afternoon. And, and the difference is, as we go back and take a look at the quarterback sneak, and look at the leg drive by this Seminole offensive line as they're able to push that Gator defense back for two yards. But the difference has been they've mixed it up a little bit better, Larry. They're running the football. And they've got Travis Miner back into the offense. Miner goes in motion. Must be in the middle. Hit and drop immediately. They get it to E.G. Green, but Keith Kelsey racks up Green after a two-yard gain. And E.G. is going to go back to the huddle and say, yo, I'm a wide receiver. Go throw it in front of that linebacker now. Well, well, well you know what's the tough part about that as a, a wide receiver, being an ex-wide receiver, is you're running a two-yard route. There's no way to get behind the linebacker. And he's sitting back there looking at the quarterback, and he sees you in the, out of the corner of his eye licking his chops, and he goes ribs. So when you're out there and they call that play, you, that's a good time to fall start, isn't it? No, I just trip down. <laughs> I make the quarterback eat it. Second down, Florida State. The Gators blitz. Busby gets rid of it, has a man complete. That's Peter Warwick at the 26-yard line. First down, Florida State. Peter Warwick, a sophomore from Bradenton Southeast High School. And, and the Gators are getting very close to get there, but you know the problem is, is that they're allowing these receivers to get inside position when they've got no help. Fred Worry on that particular play cannot give him the inside because you break down the defense. All they need is that extra step, and they've got the sack. You've got to make the quarterback hold the ball a split second long, Larry. You see those numbers on Warwick, 17.4 a catch. That's a nice number. First down at the 27 officially. Miner gets away from one tackler, not the other. Javon Curse had him first, but then it's the freshman, Rod Grady, who comes in to finish him off for a loss of a yard. And that goes to show you just how important it is, is that you stay alive and you keep working to get around the football because Javon Curse has Travis Miner in the backfield, but he's not able to bring him down as this is a very strong young man. But Rod Grady coming to the football is able to come up with the tackle. Miner listed at 6'1", 190. Almost as big as the strong safety that tackled him. Second down for the Knolls. Gators trail by four. They're on the inside handoff, and he is hammered. Elijah Williams crashed in from the corner to put the first hit on him, and the Gators finished off minor for no gain. Well, they tried to run this play back into the boundary, and 
you know, the Gators did a good job of squeezing it down, allowing Javon Curse. You've got a corner blitz on, and he does a good job of coming in. <laughs> I tell you, if I'm the offensive coordinator, I say to the big tackle, big number 68, Jason Whitaker, what are you thinking about? You just ran by the little corner making the tackle. And he missed the linebacker in front of him. He split the uprights. <laughs> he wants to be a kicker. Third down and long for Florida State. Busby with time. He's got a wide open receiver inside the 10. That's a first down. Marvin Minnis makes the catch. It's first and goal for Florida State as they connect with the freshman from Miami Northwestern High School. Well, these receivers just do a good job of running post and slant routes where they get body position on the corners. And this time, once again, he's running wide open through the middle of the field. And you just cannot allow that to happen unless you've got help. If you don't help, have help, you've got to force him outside, try to stay between him and the quarterback. Tony George was back in the ball game. That's apparently a good sign for the Gators. Tony had left earlier, shaken up. First and goal at the five-yard line. Florida State leading by four, 8.53 to play in the half. Busby to the end zone, wide open, touchdown, Melvin Pearsall. Well, you get what you're looking for out of this play. You got your tight end isolated one-on-one -on, -one on the middle linebacker. You go down, you, pu you push him inside, and then break out, and the ball's there. Great job of catching the football by Melvin Pearsall because Thad Busby is getting hit just as he releases this football, and he throws it early. Keith Kelsey, no chance to react. Thad Busby, seven for seven in that drive as Florida State picks up its first offensive touchdown of the ball game and moves up 11 points ahead of the Florida Gators here at Ben Hill Griffin Stadium. Thad Busby trying to complete a second consecutive perfect regular season for FSU. Follow me here. Follow me there. Tell me what I need to know. Call Bob. Let my voice be heard. Make my life simple. Sprint, that's my phone company. On the run, always changing. New challenges, more choices. Keeping the pace by keeping in touch. Moving ahead for the simpler things in life. Sprint, that's my phone company. They're nutty, goofy, zany, and just plain silly. From the creator of the award-winning television series, Wild America, comes a hilarious home video unlike anything you've ever seen. These are nature's fantastic follies. Fantastic Follies is a non-stop comical romp through the world of animals. It is not available in stores. Call now to get Fantastic Follies for just $19.95. Order now and you'll also receive Backyard Wildlife absolutely free. That's right. Both of these extraordinary programs are yours for just $19.95. Call now. For rush delivery, get your credit card ready and call 1-800-652-2112. That's 1-800-652-2112. Or send your check or money order to the address on your screen. Call now. Hi, I'm Chris Dorn. You're watching Breakfast with the Gators on Sunshine Network. On the headset, Thad Busby, the senior quarterback for Florida State out of Pace High School in the Florida Panhandle. Became their starter last year and led FSU to an 11-0 season until the Gators got him in the Sugar Bowl. And we see here he gets a lot of pressure. He gets rid of the football just as he's being hit by Willie Cohen. But looked like the Gators were in a zone defense because Mike Peterson went to the outside and Keith Kelsey squared up as if he had help out there. There you see, he knows that uh, he was able to dodge a bullet, was, got it off just in time, and Melvin Pierceau made a good adjustment on the football as he got the hit around in a hurry. The Gators are getting good pressure on Busby, but they're just not getting there before he can get rid of the ball. Well, it's all thrown on timing, and, and, and what you have to do to, to help that defensive line and those blitzers is you've got to get closer to the wide receivers and force the quarterback to hold the ball a little longer, Larry. 
kick was six yards deep in the end zone. Bo Carroll does not bring it out. And Florida will start at the 20 yard line trailing 17 six Steve Babick on the field. Thanks, Larry. I'm with James Jones. Uh, you, know, you talk about all the specialty players on both sides of the ball, the quarterbacks, the wide receivers, but the line play always dictates how the flow of the game. James, line play so far in this game. Well, the floor has been going pretty well for Gators. They have been keeping their, uh, their Florida State defensive lineman out, giving the quarterbacks time to throw, and the same thing for uh, that Busby. They've been giving him time, and he's been picking the Gators apart, but we're going to have to get some pressure on him some kind of way by defensive line. Let's go back up to Larry. Brindice double clutched and then threw it over the head of Taylor to go incomplete as Florida tried to get it to their running back out in the right flat and Florida State had defenders all around it and Brindice will leave and Doug Johnson will come in. Florida started this and has continued through the ball game alternating quarterbacks Florida with 124 yards of total offense and Johnson has been the more effective passer of the two seven out of ten for seventy eight for the sophomore on the draw Taylor's got very little running room stutter steps a hole develops and he gets about three or four yards out of it another good sign for the Gators Rod Frazier back in the lineup well that's good to have Rod Frazier back in there because you need to be able to run the football to keep this defense off balance you know the thing that I'd like to see if you look at Fred Taylor here, it's a draw but you like to see him hit the hole going full speed you know he's dancing around and the way this team reacts and runs with the football it's going to be hard to snap a big one when you're dancing back there in the backfield. Corey Simon back in for Florida State so other than Damian Harrell all the players that have left the game have come back. Always like to see that Brindice from the pocket throws high nice catch Jack Quez Green Quez to the 45 yard line first down Gators. Well, Larry, I have no idea what Jacquez Green's vertical leap is, but he, he just does a tremendous job. You know, usually when you see a guy go up for the football the way Jacquez does, you know, that's coaching, that's teaching, and that's what they teach defensive back. But watch this receiver go up at the highest point, picks it off, just as Dexter Jackson thought he had an interception, and then he's off to the races. So Green with the catch for Florida. Jacquez a busy first half already. Brindice fakes the draw. He gets back to back plays and he's throwing deep all alone. Travis McGriff. McGriff to the 10. Travis McGriff to the five yard line. First and goal. Beautiful play action by the Gators as they fake the entire defensive football team of the Seminoles out. Even the cameraman was fooled on that one as Fred Taylor and Noah did a super job of play action and then he did what most intelligent quarterbacks do he didn't try and hit him perfect he hung the ball up gave Travis McGriff a chance to run underneath it and make sure of the catch as the Gators come up with a big play as Travis McGriff is running through the side the secondary by himself Larry well, that ball held up a long time allowed Florida State to react Shevin Smith and Samari roll end up on the tackle three wide receivers to the left on first and goal Doug Johnson's got a man touchdown same guy Travis McGriff just tremendous execution and you gotta love it Travis McGriff makes the big catch on the play action pass and then you come right back first and ten and you give him a shot to catch one in the end zone as he catches it going into the end zone with no one around him as Doug Johnson puts the ball on the money. The Gators will go for two to try to make it a three point ball game. That was that was too easy Larry. Yeah, I mean Travis somebody must have scouting, got lost. Not in the scouting report anywhere. <laughs> That's two plays in a low where Travis McGriff was kind of like me at a high school dance. But I tell you what when they go over on the sideline they're going to figure out who Travis McGriff is. They'll add him to the list. Okay, number three, he's pretty good too. Cover him while you're at it. 17-12. Brindice in to try the two-point conversion. He throws into three men surrounding Jamie Richardson. Quez Green broke behind that group, but Brindice didn't see him, and it's no good. 17-12 is our score. The Florida Gators answer the FSU drive with one of their own. A lot of industry experts told us that the passenger side was the best place to add a third door. We got still more advice insisting that the driver side was the only logical choice. 
But as you can see, we let it all go right in one ear and out the other. Introducing the new Dodge Ram Quad Cab. The rules have changed. Winning the national championship was very important to all Gators. But I know there are more important things in life, like the work being done by the health care team here at Shands. University of Florida physicians and the health care professionals at Shands offer comprehensive care in virtually every aspect of pediatric medicine, which is why doctors from all over Florida send their most complex cases to Shands. Shands, where teamwork really makes the difference. My wife will like this. I'm sorry, sir, but we're closing. Uh, yeah, but I just wanted to know if... Why shop around someone else's schedule? With complete 24-hour service, GEICO lets you buy car insurance anytime. Buy directly over the phone and you could save 15% or more. GEICO Direct, a better way to buy car insurance. Does this come in beige? Sunshine Network brings you Florida football highlights with Steve Spurrier every Sunday at 12 noon. Tune in as Coach Spurrier and Mick Hubert review the week's game and look ahead to the Gators' upcoming opponent. Of course, this Sunday will be the final edition of the regular season. Florida football with Steve Spurrier coming up at noon on Sunshine Network. Back at the 17-yard line, Busby goes to work again. They go with the inside handoff. Miner gets to the outside. The Gators want a holding flag from the same official who called it on Eugene McCaslin, but don't get the flag. And it's an 11, about a 14-yard gain and a first down for Travis Miner. Well, this is just a little counter action just by the tailback as he gets the block coming from the other side. Big offensive tackle comes out the back door and is finally brought down by Tico Brown. Well-designed play there. Yeah, and it didn't look like holding, but neither did the other one. <laughs> <laughs> and that was Florida's point, I'm sure. Thaddeus Buller checks into the Gator lineup at defensive left end. Chester and Gurley are the tackles. They fake it to Minor. Busby keeps it, and he's caught by Bullard before he can get out of the backfield. He goes forward for maybe half a yard. That Busby not bashful about running with the ball. Coming into today's game, he had carried it forward and gained 119 yards over the course of the season. By comparison, Florida quarterbacks Brindice uh, Johnson combined and carried the ball for 29 yards in games. Well, you know, a lot of times you're forced to do that, but when you get defenses that react so well, quarterback has to be that extra weapon similar to Charlie Ward. And, of course, the Seminoles have that in their arsenal with Thad Busby. They go with the inside handoff again. Lots of running room. Miner across the 40 to the 45-yard line. That inside handoff out of the shotgun is causing Florida some problems. Eli Williams makes the tackle, but Travis Miner has gone over 50 yards in the first half. And, and what's happening here, Larry, is the defensive line from the shotgun, and they're in a pass rush mode, and it's just hard to bring this young man down with one arm because he's going to run through those arm tackles. He's got such strong legs. And it's got the Gators back on their heels. Here's another look at it. Good blocking downfield. As you can see, Willie Rogers missing the tackle. Rod Grady. There's just no way you're going to bring this guy down with one arm. Busby. Oh, right in the, right in the belly. Dwayne Thomas, the senior linebacker, turned around and the ball went right into his midsection and he didn't catch it. And that's a cardinal sin by a receiver, a, a defensive player, no matter who. You do not let the ball play you, and he tries to body catch it, and it just goes right down between his arms. Dwayne Thomas got exactly where he was supposed to go as the ball was intended for Peter Warwick. Got a good drop, located the football, had a chance to make a big play, take the ball away, wasn't able to come down with it. Raiders have fumbled it twice. Florida State has not turned it over in this first half with 5.22 to play. On second down, corner blitz. They find an open man. That's the big tight end, Pearsall, and he's racked up by Grady and Rutledge after a pickup of about four or five yards. Melvin Pearsall's third catch in this ball game, 17 yards, but one very important touchdown. 
Well, this is just a very sophisticated offense because they see the blitz coming all the way tight end, just runs a quick diagonal as an adjustment. Thad Busby gets him the football in a hurry. Now the crowd comes to its feet in the swamp, exhorting the Gator defense on third down. Busby wants time. So you talk about the 12th man, you might give the 12th man credit for that timeout as they had a bunch of noise going for the Gator defense. Florida State will huddle up and talk about it. It's a five-point game with 438 to play in the half. Are you wasting money on spoiled food? Then you need Euro Sealer, the amazing new sealer that creates an airtight seal that locks in freshness so food lasts longer. Simply slide Euro Sealer along the edge of any bag and it's sealed airtight. It's that easy. Every time you open it, food tastes like it just came fresh from the store. Look, Euro Sealer creates a seal so airtight even water won't leak. Amazing! Euro Sealer keeps cereal crunchy, chips crisp, vegetables fresh, and deli meat delicious. One week later, twist tie salad is brown and slimy, but Euro-Sealed salad is green and fresh. Now on this exclusive TV offer, you can get Euro-Sealer for only $19.95. Call now and get Euro-Can free. Euro-Can leaves edges incredibly smooth. You can even reapply the lid. That's a $40 value, all for only $19.95. To order the Euro Sealer and receive the Euro Can absolutely free, have your credit card ready and call 1 800 652 2112. Don't delay, seal the deal and order today. Call now. Hi, I'm Eric Kresser, and you're watching Breakfast with the Gators on Sunshine Network. A big play here at the stadium, the Swamp. It is third down for Florida State at the 49-yard line. They have to get inside the Florida 45. 17-12 our score. Busby with time, flushed out of the pocket. Looking, looking, he throws, incomplete. Diving effort by Peter Warwick, but he can't get there. Mike Peterson among those chasing Busby and the Seminoles will have to punt with four and a half minutes to play in the half. And Mike Peterson was the difference in this being a completed pass and possibly a touchdown because Peter Warwick came open as Thad Busby bought time scrambling out to his right. But Mike Peterson being in Thad Busby's face kept him from being able to get any mustard on the throw and is just slightly on the throne. Quez Green back at the 10 yard line for Florida. The Gators with 10 men up at the line of scrimmage. No pressure, however. Wobbly kick. Quez comes up, fields it at the 20. Tries to give up ground for some running room and he gets a little. Quez to the 25. Quez to the 30. Looks for the corner. Down the sideline. He goes out of bounds. Run out of bounds by Khalid Abdullah, the Florida State fullback. And if Abdullah doesn't get that angle, look out, Quezzy. Well, I tell you, I have seen this man in the past several years do what we call Houdini acts as Quezzy is able to catch the football. Now watch his footwork. He goes backwards and now I don't think I'm going to go that way. Now he just goes straight up the middle and he realized I got to get to the outside. And here's where he starts to use his speed. And if it was not for Abdullah, Quez is off to the races. He's able to get just a hand on him to push him out of bounds. 31-yard punt, 28-yard return. Florida from the 48-yard line. Plenty of time for the Gators here in the second quarter. They run up the middle. Taylor, Fred gets about three before he's stopped by Corey Simon. Mixed first half for Fred Taylor. He's had some pretty good running room considering he's facing the top rush defense in America. But he's also fumbled the ball twice. And, and, and both times it was, he got it knocked out from behind the first time. Second time it was the second guy in as he was struggling for, for extra yardage. And, you know, you, sometimes you figure that uh, you, you'd like to see him just go down, but, you know, you wouldn't be the back that you are if you weren't Fred Taylor and you went for it all the time. Simon jumped at the line of scrimmage, hit Wiley Rich, and the ball came loose. Brindice dove on it, but I believe Florida State will pick up their third flag of the day. Gators have been penalized six times. Offside on the defense. Violation of the neutral zone. Still second down. As we go back and take a look at it, it's another hard count by Noel Brandeis. And, you know, that's something we don't see with Doug Johnson a lot, but that shows you the senior leadership with Noel Brandeis where he's able to pick up the cheap five yards. 
by picking his spots when to go with the hard count. And it was number 96, Larry Smith, who jumped. So now Florida has a second down and one. A lot of opportunities with this play. Johnson looking down the field will throw it to the outside and wide. Incomplete. Jamie Richardson jockeying with Tay Cody. But that ball was not going to be caught by anybody under maybe eight foot two. <laughs> well, without a doubt, he overshot his intended receiver there, Larry. But, you know, as a receiver, Jamie Richardson's got to do something to this defensive back to freeze him. You cannot turn it into a foot race. As you see, Cody holding on, not allowing Jamie Richardson to get a step on him. Third down for Florida. And they need a little more than a yard. If East Korean comes in motion. The give is to Taylor straight ahead. First down at the 40 yard line. <laughs> Running behind Zach Piller on that left tackle spot. As well as, well as Ryan Kalick. Florida first down with 311 to play in the half. And, and this is the Fred Taylor that we're used to seeing just a straight ahead dive off tackle and he just lowers his shoulder and runs over Shevin Smith falling forward for the first down. So Johnson checks back in. Gators have really mixed up the offense very effectively in this first half trying to get a score touchdown here could put them back on top. Johnson throws for Quez Green juggling catch made at the 24 yard line. And Shevin Smith got away with swatting the ball out of Wes Green's hand. The official went up and talked to him, and I like that. Just, look, if you do it again, I'm going to flag you for it instead of making everything a hanky festival. Well, Shevin Smith is just a frustrated young man because once again, Jack Wes Green goes up against Tay Cody and just takes the ball away as he makes this acrobatic catch. Once again, showing the concentration as he keeps his eyes on the football and holds it up. Sort of like a trophy, you know. <laughs> and Shevin Smith said, we're not going to have that. And everybody watching would have swatted the ball out of his hands, too. Taylor up the middle. Fred picks up about seven yards on first down. Fred Taylor came into this game needing 87 yards against this vaunted FSU rush defense for 3,000 in his Gator career. And he's almost halfway there as we get close to halftime. Johnson back in the ball game. Gators with three wide receivers, 10 on the play clock. Taylor picks up the blitz. Johnson looks, fires all, oh, trampling over Nafis Kareem, Shevin Smith, and that'll be pass interference and a first down for the Gators. Well, that was, that was one that uh, we got away. He had Nafis Kareem coming across. And Without a doubt, Shevin Smith ran up his back as Doug Johnson tried to get it to him. But this is the kind of play that in the past has gotten Doug in trouble trying to force it into a covered receiver. They'll go back to the line of scrimmage, which was about the 17 and should be first and goal at about the eight yard line. Actually, no, it's not half the distance. That's no fair. On the defense. Even though in college it's a 15-yard penalty, if it's half, if it's inside the 30-yard line, they give you the full length of the penalty. If it's less than 15 yards, so it's first and goal at the four, 150 to play, and the Gators trying to take the lead. Brindis back at quarterback. Fred Taylor, big hole, touchdown! Good job. By that offensive line, they, once you give them a chance, they get down here around this goal line. It's like the spreading of the, of the Red Sea as the offensive line just blew that Seminole defensive line out of there. Fred Taylor cut back behind the center. Easy touchdown run. Here's another look at it. Watch him come back to the right side. Good blocking by Wiley Rich and even Cheston Blackshear, the right guard, was able to cut off. Good job of Mo Collins on the backside, not allowing penetration so that Fred Taylor could get in the hole. Well, the Gators missed their first extra point. Then they went for two and didn't get it. And now they'll call timeout. They've got the wrong personnel on the field for the play. Called Steve Spurrier all the way down inside the 20-yard line. 
to signal to Doug Johnson to call timeout. So we'll check out the two-point conversion. The Florida Gators have taken the lead in the swamp. It's magic time in the NBA. No Gators have taken the lead on this run. Just great play, individual blocking up front as Fred Taylor goes into the end zone untouched. What a great job Cheston Blackshear did. It looked like Johnson got inside position and he just put his nose on his hip and rode him all the way out of the play. And that's what you teach your offensive lineman. You know, just give your back a chance to read your head. If he's going to the right, take him to the right. A good back will be able to cut back behind you. And that's why Mo Collins' block was so important on the backside, getting the cutoff. Uh, Doug Owa Johns Dice has done a fine job for the Florida Gators today. <laughs> the two headed quarterback. Well, you could say what you want about the two headed quarterback, but I know back in 1982, the Miami Dolphins went to the Super Bowl with a two headed quarterback, and we used to call it the Wood Strock. That's right, David, David Woodley? Woodley and Don Strock. Yeah, Strockley didn't sound very good. So Wood Strock works better. Wood Strock worked a little bit better. You know, Woodley started, Strock came in, won the ball game. Florida after the timeout still confused. Doug Johnson confused, signaling back to the bench. 13 on the play clock. And they're out of timeouts. I guess you could take a delay a game and just play it from eight yards away if you don't get the snap. Five seconds though. Johnson seems settled. Looks to his left under pressure. Steps away from pressure. Now he just throws in the end zone and hopes Quez can't quite get up that high. It was close. He found the one place where he had a chance and just a little bit too much on it. Well, he really wanted to go to the to the uh, left side where he had three receivers, but they were all covered. He did a good job of scrambling around and then threw it up for grabs. And, you know, whenever in doubt, look for Quezzy. And that's exactly what he does. He just throws it up as high as he can. And he came very close to getting a hand on it. As you see, Quezzy goes up with one hand in the back of the end zone. Uh, just a little disappointed by the head ball coach, you say. Now, Steve Spurry, what has made the Florida program so strong in the 90s, one of three with nine wins every year, Florida State, Nebraska, the others. One of three with more than 80 wins in the 90s. Yep, Florida State, Nebraska, the others. And that is he expects to score on every play. And if you, and if you look at uh, who's been playing for national championships the last couple of years, Florida State, Florida, and Nebraska. In fact, if Florida State were to win today and Nebraska win the Big 12, Florida State and Nebraska would play, which would mean Florida, Florida State, and Nebraska would be the only teams to play in the three national championship games created by the Bowl Alliance. The Gators, however, have other plans. <laughs> Boy, what a heck of a ball game. In 1817, is that a historic score in Gator history or what? Well, I'll tell you what, the fans are getting all that they, they could hope for, both the Gators and the Seminoles, as, as we've got a bond burner here this afternoon. There's a kickoff. It's going to be taken three yards deep and not returned by Jermaine Stringer. He thought about it, but when the, the guy most responsible for protecting you is him out, that's plenty of time with their receivers. Almost intercepted. Javon Kerr's got a big paw on it, but couldn't bring it in. Well, they just tried to run a little check over to Travis Miner, and Javon Kurtz was right there in the vicinity, got his hands up, and was not able to come down. This could have been a big break for the Gators. You know, the Gators have had two opportunities to come up and make plays to take the ball away, and both times they've come up short. On second down, the crowd roars here in the swamp. They'll go with the inside handoff. Miner breaks it to the outside. He's got five. He's got 10, 12 yards still in bounds. They'll stop the clock on the first down. It's a 13 yard pickup for Travis Miner, who is closing in on 70 first half yards running the football against this Gator defense. Well, Larry, the more we look at this young man, the more, the more and more he resembles Warwick Dunn as he just jokes and moves, jokes and moves, and just continually picking up yardage going north and south. Gator defense gives up 64 yards a game on the ground. Travis Miner has 67 today. Busby, lots of time, throws it deep for Peter Warwick, and it's batted away. 
Fred Weary climbed the ladder and swatted it just as it was about to fall into Warwick's hand. That was just what you call perfect timing by Fred Weary as he timed his leap and was able to get up and swat it away because Tico Brown was not able to get over and give him any help there. This time Tico got held by Thad Busby in the middle too long. So he's not in the picture, but watch this effort by Fred Taylor as he goes up, swats it away with his right hand, just as Peter Warwick thought he was going to come down with the catch. Fred Weary, one of three finalists for the Thorpe Award for the best DB in college football. Busby hit as he throws it, sails right into the arms of Tico Brown. Tico to the 40, inside the 35-yard line, first down, Gators. And that comes from Ed Chester hitting Thad Busby so that he's not able to step up and throw the football. So it sailed. And Tico, here's what happens when you get that pressure. Even though he's able to get rid of the football, you force the errant pass as he tried to go to E.G. Green. And Tico comes down with it and brings it back, giving the Gators good field position in Seminole territory. Florida leading by one, a minute six, no timeouts remaining, but only 34 yards to go. Johnson wants a lot of them right away, and it's incomplete, overthrown. Good coverage by Tay Cody. There was no way to get that ball to Jaquez Green, who might have twisted a knee or an ankle when he landed. And if that's the case, and Jaquez is not able to line up, that would be a very, very large loss for this Gator football team. Florida medical staff checks screen. It's his right ankle that apparently he came down on a little bit. Florida spreads the Florida State defense. Now Johnson stays in, goes under center. Taylor, not much running room, got about a yard. It'll be third and nine from the 33. And the Gators continue to signal Doug Johnson, who has thrown the ball extremely well today. The mistakes have been where nobody could catch him. The good throws have been right on target. Johnson stays in on third and nine. Lock running with 35 seconds to play in the first half. And he fires incomplete. And no Gator receiver was open. Florida State had everybody covered. And now the Gators will probably go for it. It's a 50-yard field goal, and that's too much. Well, I don't know if you, you really want to go for it at this point. Uh, oh, there goes Collins Cooper. Collins Cooper's coming on, and... You know, the thing here that's most important is you got to get it up. You know, Florida State is known for blocking kicks. And uh, if he doesn't get it up, you run the possibility of a block kick and running, being able to pick it up and run it back for a touchdown. So I don't know if Florida State will come hard with the rush and give Florida that opportunity. It would be, a, would be interesting. Collins Cooper on the year six for nine field goals. He had that 50-yard extra point against South Carolina that landed just short by about four yards. Let's see what happens. He gets it up in the air in plenty of time, but it's going to fall just a little bit short. Again, just beyond the range of Collins Cooper. And Florida State will get the ball at the 33-yard line with 27 seconds and no timeouts. Well, I'll tell you, the crowd here at halftime at the Swamp definitely needs the break as the players do. What a great first half of football between Florida and Florida State. The Seminoles number one in one poll, two in the other. The Gators with the number 10 ranking in both major polls, but looking to move up and maybe possibly sneak into the bowl alliance if there's some upsets out west. They're fighting for a chance to play in a major bowl as well as the recruiting war. Stevenson with a line drive kick. Lavernius Colts fields it four yards deep and will not try to return it. And so Florida State will go on offense at the 20 yard line. The crowd files back in. Florida Field, one of the places where they let the fans leave at halftime. So they have cooled down. Cooled down or watered up? <laughs> I can't say liquored up, but. Uh, Whatever the pleasure. Uh, They're back. They're back. From the 20 yard line, Thad Busby. Less than five yards per attempt in the first half. You got to love that. He averages almost nine yards per attempt over the course of the season. Under pressure screen, nicely set up. Travis Miner racing through the secondary. He's got 15, he's got 20 yards, and he's run out of bounds at about the 41-yard line. 
a big play for Florida State on their first snap of the second half. Dwayne Thomas ends up making the tackle. Good job by the offensive line as they do they do what they're supposed to do, allow the Gator defenders to rush the quarterback and then get out in front. And then Travis Miner, just an excellent runner with the football in his hands. Busby rolling right, looking, throws the middle of the field and kind of threw off his right foot while he was gliding right, throwing back against his body and didn't get anywhere near enough on it. Well, that's just a mistake on Thad Busby's fault. I mean, part because, you know, he's rolling right, but he's expecting the pressure. He feels pressure when there is none, where he had time to square his shoulders and throw the football to a very open E.G. Green down the center of the football field. From the 41-yard line, the Gators on the bench exhorting the crowd, and the crowd responds here in the swamp. Warwick in motion. They give to Miner. Miner reads his block beautifully, cuts inside, fumbled the ball. But it looked like Florida State had an offensive lineman dive on it at the 48. Ross Brannon, big offensive tackle for the Florida State Seminoles. Javon Kurse made the play. But Brannon was able to land on it and save Florida State from disaster. He's just a freshman out of Marietta Lassiter High School. Well, the Seminoles have avoided disaster quite a bit today as Javon Kurtz comes in, knocks it loose, and Brannon is able to get on it before a Gator defender. Another golden opportunity that the Gators were not able to come up with. Gators have forced one turnover. They've dropped a couple of possible ones. Busby flushed out of the pocket as a wide open receiver. Inside the 35 and down to the 30 is E.G. Green. So the Seminoles pick up 22 yards on third down and they're in Florida territory. E.G. Green in high school when he was a junior played for a state championship and was the favorite receiver of a guy named Werfel out at Fort Walton Beach. Well, I, I know and I've heard about what he did with Danny Werfel, but you can see that he's a seasoned veteran as Thad Busby has to scramble. He moves with him, gives him a target to throw to. Of course, I should already apologize to Danny. Danny doesn't have favorite receivers. He just has guys who get the ball more than <laughs> others. <laughs> From the 30, inside handoff, Miner, no running room, gets back to the line of scrimmage. Elijah Williams, Javon Kurse make the play defensively. Florida Gators regular season ends with the Florida State game. That's not happened in a long time. The last five years, the Gators went on to the SEC championship game, but that will not happen this year as both Georgia and Tennessee won on Saturday. But the Gators still have a golden opportunity with a victory here today to move up in the polls and hopefully get a better, better bowl bid. Inside handoff, then a little misdirection as Miner tried to take it back to the left, but the Gators jammed it up. Reggie McGrew makes the tackle, gained almost five on the play. It's third down. And, and Miner, to his credit, does a good job of moving and reading on the move. This play is designed to go back outside. He sees he can't get there, reads the hole inside, breaks off the, the head of the guard, picks up five yards. The average back would have to waste a couple steps to try and get back in the hole. Miner does not. Just a freshman. Boy, is he going to be good. Already established as a good receiver as well as runner. Busby fires complete. E.G. Green at the 12-yard line. First down, Florida State. Dwayne Thomas ends up making the tackle in the secondary along with Tico Brown. But that's the second big third down completion for Busby on this drive. And, and Thomas, Dwayne Thomas is in perfect position as E.G. Green comes wide open. But what happens is running Travis Miner on a flare route brings him, takes Thomas out of the center of the field. And Busby is able to hit Green for a big game. Florida State, first down at the 12-yard line. Travis Miner inside the 10, got to the 9. Pickup of 3, Ed Chester, Mike Harris, Willie Cohen's all over there defensively for the Gators. Ed Chester's been bothered by all kinds of ailments all season long, but 
healthier now than he's been, I think, at any time this year. And it's good to see Big Ed Chester get in and get on, uh, get on that play because, you know, he was the marquee guy coming into the season playing that tackle position, but with the injuries to his knees, he has not had the banner year that was expected. Florida State, a little late leaving the huddle, only seven on the play clock. Busby lines his guys up. Just does get it off with one second to spare. Fires, it's batted down, and a flag thrown by the side judge right on the line of scrimmage. Let's see if somebody was offside. Nope. Motion on Florida State. Do you want him to have third down and seven or second and 12? Good pressure up the front. Uh, there you see Javon Curse, 6'5", getting that long arm span up in the air, being able to swat it down. Javon, a sophomore. We've seen his development this year as he's become more and more of a big play guy for this Gator defense. The Gators declined the penalty, so it is third down from the nine-yard line. They need to take it down to the two for a first down. Three wide receivers. Busby throws out in the flat. The Gator defense is there, and Miner is going down at about the 14-yard line. Mike Peterson, Tony George leading the assault for the Gator defense, and Florida State will settle for a field goal attempt. Well, I'll tell you, Javon Kurtz had it by the ankles, holding on for dear life as all of the Gator defenders start to come in to try and put this guy down, but he refuses to go down. As you'll see at the end, he's still squirming and trying to pick up the extra yardage. As you see, Javon Kurtz comes in, hits him with the ball, finally getting him on the ground. Janikowski has one field goal today. He's 14 of 19. This is high and through. So Sebastian Janikowski, the kicking game for Florida State, helping out as they drive a long way from their own 20 down inside the 10-yard line side of Florida Field. Terrific matchup between the Gators and Seminoles. This is more points than I thought we'd see scored all day long. Nat, these offenses have really executed tremendously well against quality defense well, and, and you got to give both offensive coordinators a lot of credit because they came in here they mixed things up they've been able to keep these defenses off balance where you're not able to sit up, sit in there versus the pass or the or the run mark rick the offensive coordinator for florida state and of course steve spurrier the offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach for the florida gators janikowski kicks it off through the end zone again and Florida will start at the 20-yard line. That's quite a weapon. When you've got a guy who's going to get about 60% touchbacks, you're, you're getting a, a lot of them that call it hidden yardage time after time out of your kicking game. Well, what you do is you end up forcing the, the other, your opponent to go 80 yards every time they've got the football. Quickly, let's go down to the field to Steve. Thanks, Larry. Jaquez Green back in the offense. A slightly sprained ankle. Tico Brown came out. Because For the Gator offense, Fred Taylor on the swing pass gets 11, maybe 12 in a first down. Daryl Bush runs him out of bounds. And that's a matchup that the Gators will take all day. Fred Taylor coming out of the back foot field with Daryl Bush trying to cover him one-on-one. -on -one. You know, Daryl Bush puts a good move on him, gets some separation, and then he catches the ball, turns up field for first down. Well, Florida State leads the nation with 64 quarterback sacks. The Gators have to be pretty high up there with 47. Clearly tops in the SEC. Neither has sacked the quarterback today. There you see the numbers for Brindice and Johnson combined. 189 against this Florida State defense. Taylor, one step away from big yardage, still stretches it out for a gain of seven or eight yards. Shevin Smith held onto the shoelaces with all he had to end up making the tackle. And did you see how quick Fred Taylor hit the hole that time? Just a straight ahead dive play off the left tackle behind Zach Pillars and Ryan Kalick, and he hits it in a hurry. And if Shevin Smith doesn't <laughs> grab him by the ankles and hold on for dear life, he's off to the races. Noah Brindice returns. Fred Taylor 33 yards away from 3,000 in his career. This is his last chance to add to those numbers. Bowl games don't count. Brindice under pressure throws it up there. And 
Lance Ross tried to plant and come back for it. His left leg gave out, and Shevin Smith almost got there in time to pick it off. And those are the kind of mistakes that the quarterback cannot make. He cannot throw this ball up for grabs with nothing on it. You know, you've got to take the sack. You've got good field position. You're moving the football. Line up and go to the next play. And there's Greg Spires from Cape Coral Mariner, greeting his old friend from Fort Myers Cypress Lake High School. And, 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 you, and, and if you notice, his hands were up around the headgear, and you know normally that's called. Florida State jumping around, don't see a flag. There's running route for Taylor. Taylor in the open field. Fred Taylor racing to the corner of the end zone. Touchdown! Excellent job of running by Fred Taylor. He was able to hit the right side, and as soon as he saw the block, he cut back behind the, the blocking downfield and was off to the race. We had a great block downfield. Beautiful run by Fred Taylor. The longest run of his Gator career for the senior from Bell Glade, Glade Central High School, as Fred Taylor takes it 61 yards against the nation's number one rushing defense. Watch the tremendous blocking as you see him break a tackle, and then out front, I think that's Travis McGriff, Ron Frazier leading him into the hole, and then turning on the speed, and for a big man, Fred Taylor, Ken Motor. I'll tell you, Larry, all the folks back on the muck there at Bell Glade, the Bell Glade area really jumping around right now with that big run by the homeboy, Fred Taylor. And somewhere in Tampa or wherever, there's a guy named Redell Anthony, celebrating that run just as much his high school teammate his gator teammate fred taylor over 3,000 yards in his gator career but most importantly he has put and people up on the line of scrimmage and what you call a run blitz and the risk is if you don't make the play there's no one there in the secondary as we see fred taylor go 61 yards for a touchdown Fred Taylor over 100 yards against this Florida State run defense. I went out with her in high school. But we really don't need to relive those moments. Fred Taylor in the last two weeks is closing in on 300 yards and six touchdowns. Well, he's when given the opportunity, he has done a heck of a job for this Gator football team. You know, he's been the man in the second half, and, you know, he starts out early here by breaking a long one. A low short line drive to Jermaine Stringer who picks his way through traffic up to about the 26 yard line. Taurus Ross who has been Florida's number one tackler on special teams this year makes another tackle on kick coverage and again the crowd to its feet as the Gator defense returns to the field. Florida State drove a long ways but had to settle for a field goal. But look what the Gator running attack has done today almost triple what Florida State normally allows and FSU has run better on the Gators than they're used to letting happen. This has been an offensive coach's delight to move the ball this well against such quality opposition. Inside handoff minor hit behind the line Ed Chester having his best game of the 97 season. And this is called the offense have just struck a blow now it's time for the defense to come up with some big plays and you see Ed Chester beats his man at the line of scrimmage gets penetration into the backfield and when they try to run this little off tackle play Ed Chester's there a big strong man he's able to pull minor down or was that Davey Ford I think it was. There you see Ed, a junior at a Spring Hill Springstead High School. Just outside of Tampa. Loss of three on that play. Busby to throw out in the left side. He's got a man, but not much there. Marvin Minnis made the catch, and Eli Williams wrapped him up for maybe a three-yard gain. Gators set back in his own defense, running a little tackle in game. Ball's thrown out to Bennett, but Eli's right there reacting up, seeing the release of the football out of the quarterback hands and reacting. Proud to its feet in the swamp. The Gators look for a three and out against Florida State's offense. Busby with three wide receivers. He's got time, he fires, he's got an open man, that's E.G. Green. 
and E.G. Green is all the way down to the Florida 38-yard line. Looks like a, a little corner route to E.G. Green with Thad Busby. Had plenty of time to throw the football, but he comes open between Fred Wary and Tico Brown on a corner route. Picking up large yardage. Well, that's a big play for Florida State. 36-yard gain. Busby with time deflected and still caught. Peter Warwick showing the power of concentration. Got the ball that was tipped by Mike Moten. Still caught it and turned it into about a seven or eight-yard gain. That's just great concentration. And then reacting, showing good alertness as he goes back, catches the ball in his hands. And that bullet comes back. Comes up with the tackle. That was a fumble, but it bounced right back into Warwick's arms. Bullard tried to strip it and did get it loose, but Warwick got it back. On second and two, they'll run. Travis Miner, nothing there. Good play by Mike Harris. And that'll be a loss of a couple back to the 32, maybe 33-yard line. And the defensive line that time forced Travis Miner to commit early. Usually he lets the defense commit, but everybody stayed in their lane, forced him outside, and Mike Harris comes in, makes a short tackle for a loss. Another third down. Busby has been terrific on third down of late, converting two on the previous drive, although he couldn't get the third conversion. And they settled for a field goal. He hit the big third down pass to E.G. Green just moments ago. They fake the inside handoff, go with the reverse, one man's there. And the tackle will be made at about the 23-yard line, but a first down picked up by E.G. Green. Mike Peterson ends up making the play. The Gators had a chance to corner it, but E.G. Green had the speed to get to the outside. Well, he caught Mike Peterson with, with a false step. Mike's got outside responsibility, and he's got to stay as deep and as wide as the deepest man. But he comes back, makes up for the error, makes the tackle. Here's another look. Here he starts inside. You know, you cannot catch that play from the backside, so you've got to make take, take care of your responsibility first. And that time he took one false step, and E.G. Green was by him. Busby throwing deep to the outside. Good coverage. Eli Williams step for step with E.G. Green. It's incomplete. That Busby's been very busy today. He's thrown it over 30 times. You know, we, we earlier talked about the officiating and um, some of the suspect calls, but that was a very good no call by the official because both guys are jockeying for positions. They're bumping going down the field, and alertly the officials, no call. Mike Harris checks out. Johnny Rutledge back in. There's the numbers on Busby, 190 yards. But again, only around six yards per attempt. Gators lined up offside. I think you're going to have the Gators' left defensive end called for lining up in the neutral zone. The play was a stop for no gain, but the line judge dropped it immediately. That's the judge on our side of the line of scrimmage. The side judge is to the top of the screen as you look at the play on the line, but I'm sure that'll be the call on the Gators. Tim Bochamp. Tim Bochamp in the bottom right corner. There you see the left defensive end, Tim Bochamp. And what happens is sometimes when you get out wide, you don't really have a man to line up on. And trying to get as much as you can of the football, you end up in the neutral zone, neutral zone and that's what happened with Tim there. And instead of third and ten, it'll be second and five for Florida State at the 18-yard line. Third quarter has been action-packed here at Florida Field. 5.40 to play. Florida State and the Gators have each scored since halftime. The Gators lead it by five. Florida State backs in the eye. We haven't seen much of that. Second man through is minor. He has hit, keeps his balance to the corner. Touchdown, Florida State. And there we saw the strength of Travis Minor as he's able to break the tackle of Tico Brown and get into the end zone. Just tremendous balance. Looked like he was going down. He was able to put his hand down and catch his balance, pop back up, and an 18-yard touchdown run. Here's another look at it as he comes right up the middle. 
and the free safety has to make this tackle. Tico Brown is not able to come down with the tackle. And now Florida State's turn to go for two. With it being a one point Florida State lead, they'd like to be up by a field goal, so they'll go for two. The Gators haven't had any luck going for two. And now the Seminoles will use a timeout to huddle together and talk about this two point conversion play that they want to run. We'll take time out as well here on Sunshine Network. And we'll part of the Gator crowd as the Gators get set to defend a two point conversion play for Florida State as the Seminoles try to go up by three in this back and forth ball game. The biggest lead either team had, Florida State was up 11. There's Miner out in the flat and he'll be dropped right there. Keith Kelsey put the freshman down. And Florida State's two-point play is unsuccessful. Well, they got what they wanted, though, Larry. They wanted to get the ball out in Travis Miner's hands one-on-one. -on -one, but Keith Kelsey came in and made a sure tackle. You know, you'd like to get the ball in the, in the hands of your best runner because there's not very much you can do when you're first and goal, or should I say you're going for the two-point conversion on the three-yard line. You don't have a lot of room to work, so you're trying to get it into the niftiest runner's hands. But Keith Kelsey would not hear it. As we take a look from above, rather healthy leads and gave up some late scores. This is a very different set of circumstances for Florida State's defense against this Gator offense, which has used the alternate quarterback system very effectively. And that's what you expect when you get two teams of this magnitude playing each other. It should be a very close and, and tight ball game. Uh, and ironically, it's a little tighter than we anticipated as far as the ability to score points. High deep kick corner might try to take this one out. No, Damon Carroll fumbles it, and the Gators just barely down it short of the goal line. Running down there to kind of bust things up in a hurry for Florida State. Who goes Brian Allen? Perhaps. Yeah, Brian Allen. Gators almost muffed that one into a disaster. Instead, it'll be at the 20-yard line. And, and good awareness by Eli Williams when Bo Carroll mishandled the, the kickoff. He was aware to get over and get on it and down the football. Let's go down to the field and Steve Babbitt. Steve, what you got? Thanks, Larry. You know what's been interesting? You talked about these two defenses, two of the best in the country. We haven't had a sack yet. Both defensive lines have gone at it, but the other offensive lines have done a good enough job. We haven't had a sack in this game yet. I'm, I'm amazed by that. I think Andre Wadsworth is too. So might be Javon Curse and a few others. Florida trying to run a little misdirection. I think Florida State would go for the reverse and open up some room for Taylor, but Larry Smith and Corey Simon had better plans for FSU's defense, and it's a loss of a yard. Well, even when you run that misdirection, what you're hoping to fool is the linebackers and the safeties to get them out of step because the defensive linemen do not see it. The only thing that would affect them if you hear the call reverse, reverse. Other than that, the offensive line has got to get, try and get a hole for the guy to pop through. Both teams have had good balance running and throwing the ball. Plenty of offense and still a long way to go. Quick pass to Quez Green, just inches shy of a first down. Just a two-step and pop it for Doug Johnson. And the Gators are faced with third and less than a yard. Just three steps, let it go, a little slant route. Quez catches the ball in his hands, knows he's going to get popped. Gets down, protects the football. Quarterback sneak, Doug Johnson gets it across the 30 and a first down. Boy, the line judge is just giving him the nose across the 30, which is all you want. So Florida will move the chains and pick up a first down as we near the four minute mark to go in this third quarter. And this is just a little goose play. You can come up to the line of scrimmage, you goose the center, and when the, you, when the quarterback goose the center, we go. We don't run that play up here though. Hey, what are you talking about? Everybody has that play in their offense. Talking about our booth the from the 30 yard line. <laughs> I, <There's> hope, <laughs> I hope not. Larry. <laughs> they run the reverse. Quez Green's got running room. Florida State, great pursuit. It looked like John Quez Green had all kinds of room, and Tay Cody and Samari Roll dropped it for about a four or five yard gain. Well, Tay Cody was in man coverage, and as soon as John Quez went in motion, you know, he's going across, so he's running with him stride for stride, trying to keep leverage. And what Jacquez does here is he tries to cut back. Samari so Roll and 
as well as Tank Code is right there to hold him to a short game. Mark it just across the 34 yard line. A four yard pickup for Quez who has thrown a pass in this ball game. Had a very fine punt return. And has been an active receiver. Johnson fires, diving catch. Kareem at the 46 yard line, first down. And what I like about what the receivers are doing today, Larry, they're making the sure catch. The ball's a little bit short, a little bit under throw. They come back and they get their hands down underneath and make sure they catch. So there's been a lot of talk about getting hit after the after the the ball is released. And there we've seen Greg Spires not only come in and hit him late, but actually snatch him down by the face man as he complains to the umpire. Uh, or to the official, excuse me. The referee does not see it or agree with Doug's complaint and so there is no flag thrown Brindice checks back in and those are the things that Doug Johnson has to learn to get over in a hurry Brindice hit as he throws but it is still complete Nafis Kareem just got his hands in ahead of Samari Roll and it's another first down and, and that was one where Nafis Kareem got lucky you know he makes the break he doesn't come back to meet the football and Samari Roll came very close to stepping in there and intercepting the football. Good concentration as we see Brindice getting hit. But watch this move. Now he stands still. you got to come back and meet the football. Wow. Great look from the guys in the crew and the eagle eye of my sidekick up here in the booth. From the 43-yard line. Gators run it. Fred Taylor bounces it to the outside. He's got about five or six before he's finally run out of bounds using the stiff arm against Chevin Smith. And they'll mark him out after about a three yard pickup. It'll be second and about seven. 202 to play third quarter. And there we saw the strength of Fred Taylor as he's able to stiff arm Chevin Smith. Chevin Smith actually hits him right at the line of scrimmage, but with the stiff arm, he's able to ward him off and pick up three or four yards. Florida will go with three wide receivers on second down from the 40 yard line Doug Johnson under pressure throws down the sideline Jamie Richardson bumping along with Tay Cody but it's incomplete Doug might have thrown that a little bit quickly well, it looked like that uh, was Travis Taylor was the intended receiver, the freshman, and what he's got to learn is to get some separation. You know, he, he's running stride for stride with Tate Cody, and he tries to use his arm to push him off at the last minute to get separation, but you've got to get separation a little bit sooner than that as the ball is slightly overthrown. Third and seven from the 40-yard line, Taylor 19. Travis is... Not played a great deal in this his freshman year, but he's learned a lot. Under pressure, Brindice gets rid of it incomplete, and what a lick put on Noah Brindice by Tony Bryant. Right end, junior, backs up Greg Spires. If you think Florida State's gonna drop off when they lose Wadsworth and Spires, keep two names in mind. Roland Seymour and Tony Bryant, they've combined for 13 sacks, and they're both coming back. Well, Bryant beat beat Zach Pillars right off the snap of the football and Brendice was just dead meat. Fortunate enough he was able to get rid of the football and avoid the sack. Florida will go for it on fourth down from the 40 yard line. They need to get just shy of the 33. Johnson with good protection in and out of the hands of Travis McGriff. Good read, good protection, perfect throw, not complete. Well, not quite a perfect throw. The ball went through the hands of Shevin Smith because once again, Doug Johnson tried to force the ball in. You know, McGriff had a chance to catch this football, but it was after it went through the hands of Shevin Smith there, you see. You know, that's the problem that got Doug Johnson in trouble early in the year, throwing the ball down the center of the field, throwing it in the coverage, not seeing the defender as he's trying to force the ball into Travis McGriff. So Smith got a hand on it. And you saw the change in the ball, the wobble after it went past Smith. So you know he deflected it. Tougher play for McGriff. Much tougher. Busby under pressure. And there is the first sack of the night. And it goes to Johnny Rutledge. And it's good for a bunch of yards. About 15 on the sack. 
Well, Johnny Rutledge gets the sack, but this is a defensive line linebacker sack because they did a super job as Busby spread it out to his left of not allowing him to get outside. I think it was Javon Curse that forced him back inside as you see him coming up, and he's got nowhere to go with the football as Johnny Rutledge comes in and pulls him down. Busby started to look for a chance to throw it away, but realized he had none and just ate it. There's Rutledge. Johnny Rutledge's fourth quarterback sack of the season. They'll run the draw on second down. Miner gets back about five or six of it. He's tackled by a host of Gators. Rod Grady got there first. And then they had a team meeting at the 30-yard line. A defensive team meeting. Yes. It'll be third down and 19 for Florida State. Boy, I tell you, I like Travis Miner as a runner, as a receiver, just a freshman, very highly recruited. Florida and Florida State were right there in the final decision along with Notre Dame. Florida State got his services. I mentioned earlier, the same high school that produced Warwick Dunn, wearing Warwick's number 28. Florida State on third and 19. Quick throw to E.G. Green and looking at about six yards. Mike Peterson there defensively along with Mike Harris. So the Gator defense put in a mildly difficult position with the ball at the 40-yard line. Goes three and out and that completed pass is the final play of the third quarter in this annual showdown between the Gators and the Seminoles. Back with what promises to be an incredibly exciting fourth quarter action after this timeout on... Back up to you guys. Okay, thank you, Steve and James. Cottrell back to punt. Florida with 10 guys on the line of scrimmage. Gators have not come close to a punt in a long time. Jacquez Green fields it at the 23. He's got some running room. Can't get to the corner, cuts back to the middle of the field and gets it up to about the 34, 35 yard line. 40 yard mm -hmm. kick, 13 yard return. Jamal Reynolds, a freshman defensive end out of Aiken, South Carolina, makes the play for Florida State. There you get a look at the numbers. The defense has played a good role in the third quarter, but again, uh, the Florida Gators 241, Florida State 196. Well, Larry, this is where you find out the character of your football team. Fourth quarter, tight ball game, all the marbles on the table. You get a chance to find out what's the character of your football team. From the 34, the Gators run a draw play. Fred Taylor breaks it outside. He's got a first down. He's got more to the middle of the field into Florida State territory at the 43-yard line. Excellent job of outrunning the pursuit as he started up the middle, saw that there was nothing there, jumped outside, and then scattered up the sideline. This play is designed to go up the middle of the field. He sees there's nothing there, and he just outruns the Seminole defense, and it takes Lamar Green coming all the way from the other side as he cuts back to bring him down. Big running play for the Gators. And they do it with Scott Bryan at right tackle, Zach Zadalis at right guard, Corey Yarbrough, Pat Browning, and Cooper Carlisle, the second offensive line. Dave, Damon Bo Carroll trying to find some running room. And he gets roughed up long after the whistle. It'll gain, be a gain of just a couple of yards. Florida Partisans looking for a flag. Well, we've had a couple of plays where you would think that the Seminoles got a little rough after the whistle with no flag, so you can understand the Gator fans being a little upset. But Bo Carroll, for as small as he is, is extremely strong. As you see, Cower cannot get him down, and eventually, even with Daryl Bush coming in, they're still not able to get this little 165-pound scat back down. And that was Bush, the extra guy in after the whistle. Johnson under pressure, throws in the middle, and it's incomplete. He got it around the ankles of Bo Carroll and averted a 17-yard sack. Sam Coward, Julian Pittman putting on the pressure. Well, they were trying to run a little middle screen to Bo Carroll, but what happened is Coward comes free without anybody getting any blocking on him, and he does a good job, and he throws the ball, not to complete it, but at the feet of Bo Carroll so that he could get rid of the football and avoid the sack. 
Third down for Florida at the 41 yard line. Of course, they were at the 40 last time when they went for it on fourth down. Noah Brindice into the ball game, two on the play clock. The Gators false start, or does it delay a game? It's probably delay a game before the false start. Either way, it's five yards against Florida. The Gators take exception to Florida State jumping across again after the whistle. Well, Larry, one thing you'll find out in, in, in these types of ball games when you're talking state Third rivals. Game. On the offense, five yards, third down. As I started to say, one of the things that you'll find in ball games when you've got two state rivalries like this, there's not, no such thing as intimidation. And what the Seminoles are trying to do is intimidate this offensive line, and this Gator offensive line is not hearing it. So they're pushing back. Doug Johnson checks back in. Johnson, his best playing time, his best performance. Since back in the Arkansas game. 13-33 to play. Johnson looks over to the sideline a little confused. Six on the play clock. And now the Gators will use a timeout. So they take a delay a game and then a timeout. And we'll call timeout as well here at Ben Hill Griffin Stadium, Florida Field. 13:33 to play. The Gators, one of three, two, one of two times in the last three years, the Gators and Seminoles have met in a bowl game. They will not meet in a bowl game this year, but this is better than most of the bowl games will ever hope to be at the end of this college football season. But you know that shows you the the, the character and the talent of these two football teams. That within four years, these teams have met six times. Steve Spurrier, 3-5-1 against Florida State. This is the 10th matchup he's had with Bobby Bowden. Doug Johnson on third down and about 13. Steps up in the pocket. Throws deep for Jacquez Green in the end zone. Incomplete. Samari Roll along with Dexter Jackson on the coverage. The Gators went for all of it and couldn't quite connect. Well, that was one where... You've got to give Dexter Jackson credit. You know, he got in between the receiver and the quarterback, and he goes up and is able to get his hands on the football as Jacquez Green had a step on him. The ball was slightly on the throne, and that's Samari Roll, excuse me, that goes up, comes close to the pick. Would have been his eighth pick of the year if he was able to pull it off. Instead, Florida will punt this time from the 46-yard line. Stevenson will try to pin Florida State in deep, and he kicks a beauty. That will sail into the end zone. Robbie Stevenson, that's when he gets his best kicks. It's been an unfortunate year for Robbie in that regard, a 46-yarder. But whenever he has tried to pin him deep, it seems like that's the time he hits it just right. For Stetson, Friday night, the game you saw right here on Sunshine Network. And you'll see the Coastal Carolina game as well. If you can't make it to the stadium or the O'Connell Center, we certainly hope you will turn in for that action. Now, Matt, we look at this Florida defense. They've, had, they've really played well except for one drive this second half. Can they get a takeaway? Can they give the Gator offense some great field position? Well, they've had their opportunities. They just weren't able to come down with it. They've had one takeover to date. But, uh, you know, they've had their opportunities, and they just got to continue to apply pressure. Busby sacked by Ed Chester. He got underneath the offensive lineman and just drove him back into Busby. Well, that's just sheer strength. As you see, Ed Chester, as you look at the replay, will get underneath the blocker, and it's like he's on a skateboard as he just <laughs> drives him back into Thad Busby. And Thad just said, Let, hey, don't hurt me. I'm down. Willie Cohen's made sure of it, and the Florida State Partisans grumbled a little bit, as the Gators did a while ago, about that last guy getting in there. But consistency from the officiating crew, no flag in either case. Inside handoff, nothing there. The Florida defense drives it back. Javon Kirst leads the way. Mike Peterson, Mike Moten also in on the tackle, and Florida State's gone backwards two straight plays. And that's called great coaching by Bobby Stoop. They make the correction. Now watch Willie Rogers squeeze this play down so that Javon Curse is able to make the play on Travis Miner with nowhere for him to run the football. Stoops has to be happy with that effort. Now it's third and very long. Chester has limped out. He's 
testing that knee again, which has slipped in and out on them all season long. The Gator defense looks to pin their ears back. Curse at left hand, Willie Rogers at right end. They'll throw a little screen. Warwick cuts it back into traffic, and he'll be dropped around the 17-yard line. McGrew, Harris, Moten all get in there defensively, and the defense gets a three and out deep in Florida State territory. Yeah, a little flanker screen where they just want to get the ball in Peter Warwick's hands because he's a great runner with the football. But, you know, when he's been able to break these plays before, he wasn't going up against this Florida defense who have some super tacklers coming in there. Wes Green back at his own 45. The Gators again with a 10-man line. No pressure on Cottrell. Good kick. Green at the 41. Makes a man miss. Got a little block there. Yeah, Demetrius Lewis made the block. It was Demetrius. And Florida is inside Florida State territory at the 48-yard for his 281st career coaching victory. Well, looking back to 1997 and seeing the Sugar Bowl with the matchup they had with Florida and Florida State, you better believe the Orange Bowl people are here and they're 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 still biting their tongue. The fact that they they weren't able to get such a significant game as the Gators and the Seminoles, and they're here watching the Seminoles today, as I saw Keith Tribble earlier today, Larry. Johnson fakes a little pump and go. The feast Kareem has to wait on it. Makes the catch at the 15-yard line. Well, Nafis Kareem is a young man that Coach Dwayne Dixon has so much confidence in him. He says that this guy possesses unbelievable talent, and he's been waiting for him to step up big. And this time, he's wide open, ball slightly on the throw. And just as Dexter Jackson comes back, he jumps up, takes it away from him, makes the catch. Junior out of Marietta, Georgia. Nafis Kareem. Third catch of the ball game. Look at this concentration as he goes up and just takes the ball away from Jackson. Fred Taylor breaks a couple of tackles and gets a yard out of nothing. As he moves inside the 15, Sam Coward ends up finishing him off. Think of that recruiting class. At wide receiver, we know Anthony, Ike Hilliard, Jacquez Green, Nafis Kareem, Jamie Richardson, and Travis McGriff all signed on the same day. I tell you, there's, there's a lot of colleges around kicking themselves because if we could have just got one. Yeah. Just one. Quick pitch to the outside. Taylor cuts it back in. He's got a couple down close to the 11-yard line. And it'll be a third down for Florida. They'll need between five and six for a first down, between 11 and 12 for a touchdown. 9.45 to play. And as luck would have it, the Gators are heading right into the Florida State band, which is right on this goal line, but they cannot play during the play. Three wide receivers for Doug Johnson. No running back as Taylor splits out to the left. Green in motion, gets the ball. Quez does a reverse to Travis McGriff. Travis throws it up for grabs, and it's incomplete. Oh, mercy. Oh, mercy. Was that almost a disaster? But the Gators will get to try for a field goal. Well, you come back with a little trickery, and uh, it worked early in the ball game. You save it for the right spot. But this time, the Seminoles were not full, and this was a ill-advised pass by Travis McGriff. If Doug Johnson is not open, you cannot throw the football. Not like that. You've got two guys back there, and one of them being Samari Roll, which is their best defensive uh, back. Collins Cooper to give the Florida Gators the lead here in the fourth quarter from 28 yards out. And he hooked it. No good. He missed an extra point early, and now he misses the field goal, and the Florida Gators fail to score inside the FSU 15-yard line and still trail by a point with 9.09 to play. And the thing you worry about here is the, the fact that the Gators losing the momentum. There we see a disgusted Coach Steve Spurrier as he talks to College Cooper a little bit there, but 
you know, eventually what you've got to do is pat him on the back. Snap, but it was there in plenty of time. It was plenty of time, but he just flat hooked it. And what happens is out of the corner of your eye, you see the guy coming up the middle and you try to avoid him. And I think that might have caused the, the poor hook. The place kicking game, the difference between these teams right now. Florida State tries the middle, nothing there. The Gator defense is really stiffened. Johnny Rutledge leads the assault for Florida's defensive troops. What a day at the office it's been for Travis Miner. 18 carries, closing in on 100 yards. Fred Taylor well over 100 yards for the Gators. Florida State will let the clock run probably as much as humanly possible now. They want to see if they can eat up some clock and make it as difficult as possible for Florida. The Gators started their last drive in FSU territory. Busby fakes, fires out in the flat. Peter Warwick, and he tackles himself at the 30. Very close to the first down, and based on the spot, he will have it. Just the nose of the ball on the 30-yard line. Now, this is silly. You can't. There's no reason to measure because you spot the sticks and the referee overrules. The line judge signaled in for a measurement, and the referee says, hold on. If it touches the line, it's a first down. If it doesn't, it isn't. Well, that's why he is the referee. <laughs> <He's> the boss. <laughs> uh, you, you, you have to look at Florida State and what they're doing and, and the respect that they have for this Gator defense because even when they throw the football, they're either sprinting the quarterback out or they're doing it off play actions, not just the straight drop back pass that you would normally see Florida State run. From the 30. Busby gets a good block from his running back and completes the pass to Pearsall for about seven or eight yards, but the key was the block by Travis Miner. Florida had a man coming clean right up the middle, and the freshman put a hat on him. And that's why you see that Travis Miner was so highly recruited as he's able to get the, the block. And I think that was number 58, Johnny Rutledge, but a good block, excuse me, Dwayne Thomas. Coming up the middle, what a good block by this young man, and he's a complete ball player. Catches, blocks, and he runs. They run with the fullback, Khalid Abdullah. He doesn't get far. Thomas and Curse wrap him up, but he may have gotten the first down. He only needed about a yard and a half, and he got that just across the 40-yard line. So back-to-back -back first downs for this Florida State offense, and they're taking some time off the clock, and that man wants the ball back with a chance to try to win it with his offense. Well, that's the big part of it. When you get down there, you've got to be able to capitalize. you either got to punch the football in, or you've got to be able to convert on special teams. And now that field goal miss is really looming large. Busby with time, throws deep down the right sideline, just a little strong. Peter Warwick had gotten behind Fred, Ta Fred Weary, but Freddie got a break as Busby overshot it. Well, not only did he have a step on Fred Weary, but looked like Fred was not able to close the gap as the ball was in the air. So the Gators are very fortunate here that the ball is overthrown because if anything, he's extending that separation. Now it's second down at the 40. 6.29 to play. Jermaine Stringer into the ball game, splits out to the right. Busby runs the draw play. Up the middle, gets about five. Tico Brown, Tony George. Half the Florida defense needed to wrap up Miner. And that should put Travis Miner right at the century mark for this afternoon. Just a little draw action with the lead block. And he just does a super job of hopping through the hole before Mike Harris is able to stop him for a short game. A big third down play here. Might make the difference in whether the Gators get one or two more possessions in the ball game. Busby throws down the middle too high for Pearsall, and it's fourth down. Harris and George sandwich the Florida State tight end, but they will punt it away. 
And the Gators will get the ball, and with 5.41 on the clock, they may get two chances, each team with two timeouts remaining. Well, what they've got to do is be alert. You know, Bobby Bowden has so many tricks in his bag. You've got to first make sure they kick the football. As you see the replay of Busby trying to go down the middle to Pearsall with Mike Harris coming in to make sure that he doesn't catch it. Good kick. Hits at the four-yard line and takes its time getting into the end zone, but it finally does. And Florida will start 80 yards from the end zone and about 60 from field goal range back at their own 20 yard line with five minutes and 32 seconds to play in this ball game. Well, Larry, this game has been pretty evenly matched. Games where the Gators have not. Florida State has kicked a couple of field goals. They've made their extra points. The Gators missed an extra point early, then had to go to two point conversions for a while. Taylor dropped the ball and then he is racked up. Hit hard by the Seminole defense. Andre Wadsworth in on the coverage, but an incomplete pass. If he caught it, it would have been a loss of about five. Well, the, the, Wadsworth shaken up. Well, the Seminoles were in good position as we look at Wadsworth down there. He's he's on the rush. But just as the ball is, is received, he's the guy that comes in and hits Taylor. And I think it was inadvertently as he was falling down. And because of that, he's down. Got it with the left shoulder. So that's what they may be checking on Wadsworth. And while they do that, we have a chance to check in with Steve Babbitt. Larry, you talk about the special teams play. And, you know, the thing about Collins Cooper, though, he's got to wipe everything away because he's... If it's a pinch nerve, it'll bother him throughout the remainder of the season. Florida facing second down and 10 as Wadworth heads off the field. Of course, Florida State's not gotten to the Gator quarterbacks today. The offensive line has played marvelously, and the Gators have gotten the ball out of there quickly, a lot of time to frustrate the run and rush, and I guess the running attack is probably as big a factor as anything. Well, anytime you make the defensive line play the run first, pass second, you've got a better chance of completing the football and not getting sacked. So that snap right over the head of Doug Johnson, rolling to the right, fires incomplete. And it'll be third down. The Florida State fans want a grounding, but Fred Taylor was in that mass of humanity. And the referee quickly pointed to Taylor and said there was a guy there. I know he didn't want to complete the pass, but he made it look good. Well, so, <laughs> so much today. I thought harped on Doug Johnson and, and it, the, the decisions that he made. And here you see a great decision on his part. He knows that he's got a middle screen set up. He just throws it at the dirt allowing himself to get rid of the football and avoid the safety. Gator center Wiley Rich. Talk about a guy who's got to shake it off because he's got to snap another one right away. It's third down. Johnson stays in. Steps up. Flag on the play. Richardson drops the pass. Referee threw it in the offensive backfield. It's a personal foul face mask on the Gator offensive line. And if Florida State takes it, Florida will have third down back around the five-yard line. If they decline it, the Gators will punt. Personal foul. Freshman face mask. On the offense. Shows the time. Fourth down. We take a good look at it. I think they get Mo Collins as he's extended. But he does take the hand down. But a little too late because the referee had already saw it. And he was calling it a 15-yarder, not an inadvertent one. So at any rate, Florida State declines. The Gators will punt, and the defense will have to get the ball back. Stevenson had to jump up to get it. There's a punt. Driving kick around the 40. Fielded. Warwick looks for running room. He's got some. Peter Warwick in the open field. The Gators chase him to the sideline. All right, comes back the other way. There's a clip. No flat. Warwick gets it to the 42-yard line. The Gator bench is going bonkers. Ends up being an 18-yard return. He ran about 90 yards with the football. Well, there should have been a clip call, but you have to admit, Peter Warwick is a very exciting young man as he reverses his field. 
And there's a good look at the clip. And the, and the rule is you've got to get your head in front on the numbers. And that time, Dexter Jackson clearly hit the Gator defender in the back. Oh, that's one that Florida would love to have. That's the difference in the ball being around the 30 and being at the Gator 42. Pitch to the outside, running room. Here's Miner. Miner inside the 30. Travis Miner run out of bounds at the seven yard line. Well, this guy just continued to impress you every time he puts his hands on the football. You know, this is just a little quick toss, starts upfield, and then watch the acceleration. You know, it doesn't look like he's that fast, similar to Warwick Dunn, but he just runs off and leaves defenders as he's able to take the ball down to the six-yard line of the Gators before Mike Harris pushes him out. 41 yards on the carry. There you see the numbers. Miner now up there in Fred Taylor territory for rushing yardage in this ball game. First and goal, Florida State. The Gators will desperately try to keep him out of the end zone. Fullback, Abdullah, he's got it to the four. If Florida State scores a touchdown and kicks the conversion, the Gators will need eight, a touchdown and two-pointer to tie and send it into overtime. Well, what the Gators need to do here, or want to do here, Larry, is very simple. You know, stop this Seminole football team, force them to sell for a field goal because that puts them in position where offensively, if they can go down and score a touchdown, they'll, they can still walk away with the victory. You see both teams have rushed the ball far better than their opponents are used to see, seeing it happen. Miner gets the toss running right side. Grady can't get him, and he fights his way down to the two-yard line. Rod Grady had him about the six or seven, ran right through the freshman and got down inside the two. It's third and goal. It's just determination by Travis Miner as he runs through tackles. You, you've got three Gators with opportunities at him, and no one's able to get a good, clean shot and bring him down. Williams checks out, Javon Kirst checks in. Florida State's going to go with three tight ends. On third and goal. Travis Miner, no chance. No chance at all. Johnny Rutledge got there first. He had plenty of help. It's fourth down, and does Florida State go for it, or do they kick it and force the Gators to get in the end zone? It looks like they'll kick it. Well, the Gator defense have done what they would like to do. That's hold them to a field goal effort. As you see, Javon Kirsch, Johnny Rutledge is the first guy through, but this entire Gator defense flowing to the left, coming up with the play. Of course, Florida will try to block this thing. Although Javon Kirsch came out, he's usually the guy. Now time is called. Did someone in Florida State called timeout? The play clock did not run out. Florida State calls time. 2.41 to play in the ball game. The Seminoles trying to add to a one-point lead. It's basically an extra point from the right hash mark for Janikowski. And it's good. Janikowski taunts the stands with a little gator chomp afterwards. Pickers aren't allowed to do that, are they? Well, someone forgot to tell him that it's not over till the fat lady sings, and there's still two minutes and 38 seconds left in this ball game while he's taunting the gator fans. And that might have been what Kevin Long just said to him. Say, hey, Rook. <laughs> hey, Rook. <laughs> Continue to mix the foot, mix it up, because every time you get a first down, the clock stops to move the chain, so there's no rush. You know, two minutes and 38 seconds with two timeouts is like having five minutes left in the ball game. It really is. Florida State 10-0. With a win, they go to the Orange Bowl to face Nebraska if Nebraska wins out. If not, they might see Peyton Manning down there. If well, Nebraska were to stumble. Well, uh, you know, being a member of the Hurts Bowl committee myself, um, of course, I'd like to see the Gators win. I, I'm a diehard Gator, but uh, the Orange Bowl committee is here looking at 
the Seminoles uh, with the expectation of the Seminoles versus Nebraska, but ironically, we would take anybody we get. There's a touchback as again, Bo Carroll cannot return it, and so the Florida Gators look down on the field after Florida State went 39 yards. They had that big run by Travis Miner, but then the defense stiffened, forced another field goal attempt. They've done that today regularly, and now the offense has 80 yards to glory. But that's been the the M.O. of this defense all year long. They might give up a big play, but if you don't get it in the end zone in a hurry, somehow or another they're able to bend their backs and stop you and force you to settle for the field goal try. Doug Johnson in for the first snap. Hollers something out to his receivers to the right. Johnson throws deep for Jock West Green. He's got it. in Georgia being the marquee guy the guy that makes plays and here you see Doug Johnson with a little stutter and go goes to his favorite receiver and he just airs it out Jack West runs under it and then watch the run after the catch and it really doesn't look like he's running that fast but he is flat moving tremendous play by Jack West Green They'll mark it at the 18, officially 62 yards. Two minutes to play in the ball game. Johnson stays in. Taylor on the draw. Taylor inside the 15. Fred Taylor stays in bounds. Where is it? Out of bounds at the one-yard line. Shevin Smith drove him out, but Fred Taylor gives the Gators first and goal. And, and let's give not not beast Kareem credit for not throwing the block. He had a chance to throw a block for Fred Taylor there on the sideline as Fred Taylor steps out of a tackler and he sees that it's going to be an illegal block and he stays away and allows Fred Taylor to run it down to the two-yard line on his own. Good heads-up play by Nafis Kareem. Taylor with three touchdowns today. The Gators need to get in the end zone to take the lead. Doug Johnson waves at the crowd to cool it a little bit. Taylor up the middle, touchdown! And that's the bread and butter play for the Gators once you get down inside the money territory. Give it to that man, Fred Taylor, as he goes over the left tackle and left guard for the touchdown. Good strong running by Fred Taylor, running up the back of Ryan Kelly, Wiley Rich, and Zach Pillars. Now for a three-point lead, so that Florida State can only tie with a field goal, and it is good. Collins Cooper makes that kick for the Gators. Florida now with over 500 yards total offense against a Florida State defense ranked third in the nation that over the course of the season has held their opponents to an average of 175. And that just goes to show you what we've been echoing all year long. When these two teams meet, you can throw the records out because they're playing for pride as you see the Gators come back with a 80-yard drive to take the lead after everybody would have counted them out, showing the character of this Steve Spurrier coach football team. How about that offensive line today? They have been fabulous. They have done a tremendous job, not allowed a sack, and, and Doug Johnson, with all the pressure he's been under, not losing his job, standing up with him when they really need him, and making the play. Just a perfect throw to Jacquez Green on that bomb. Doug Johnson, Steve Spurrier kept trying to bring him back. He played against Georgia, had two touchdowns dropped, made some mistakes. He came back against South Carolina, and nothing at all worked for Doug Johnson. But this week, alternating quarterbacks, Doug Johnson has shown the brilliance he showed the first five weeks of the season against the finest defense he's seen all year. And, and he really 
has, has really shown why Steve has so much confidence in him and why Steve wanted so badly for him to get out of that slump because he knows that this young man has the ability to lead this Gator team in the future. Now let's remind everybody, a buck 50, one minute, 50 seconds and two timeouts. That is a ton of time for Florida State. And with Janikowski, once you cross midfield, you've got a chance to try the field goal. Stevenson kicks it high. It comes down to Lavernius Coles at the goal line. Coles into the middle of the pile and is driven down at the 16 or 17 yard line. Great coverage by the Gators. Let's go down to the field to Steve Babbitt. You know, I'm not sure how the next minute and 46 seconds are going to go, but Doug Johnson, what a game. You know, Doug Johnson, Noah Brandeis, they had to know the game plan. They knew they were going to share the time. Doug Johnson made a great throw to Jaquez Green. Think about what Doug's gone through. This could be one of his greatest hours, but a minute 46 to go. And only one timeout. Let me correct myself. Florida State used one down near the goal line on their last drive that led to a field goal. So they have one timeout remaining. And the time wolf, the clock stops on a first down. Busby under pressure, gets away from it. On the run, Busby will pick up about nothing. He'll lose a yard back to the 16. That'll officially be a sack for Tony George because it's a loss on a pass play. So George makes the play. Eli Williams came with the pressure on the corner blitz. And Florida State is going to use up quite a bit of its time on that very first play. Gator defensive line's not ready. But Busby takes his time. Over the middle, incomplete. 1-10 to play, and Florida State has third and 11 at the 16-yard line. And that time, the Gators came with a little different pitcher. This time, they come with a little zone, and they're sitting back reacting up. And Mike Harris has a beeline for E.G. Green. The Gators will not repeat as SEC champs. I'm not sure if that sting will be noticeable if they hold on in this last minute 10. Busby fires. It's intercepted. Dwayne Thomas makes the play at the 38-yard line, and the Florida Gators are three snaps away from upsetting the top-ranked Seminoles. Well, it's always been said. Listen to the crowd. They tell you the story, as it's always been said, that when you come into the swamp, you've got to be ready to play. As Dwayne Thomas, early in the ball game, had a chance to make a big play. This time, he steps up, steps in front of the would-be receiver, makes the interception, giving the Gators the football, and a chance to run out the clock. All they've got to do is take a knee. Florida State can only call one timeout. There's a little... Pushing and shoving, really unnecessary. Larry Smith, you don't want to taint a great game with some fisticuffs this late. And, and look at Dwayne Thomas at the top of your pitcher. He's going back to his, his zone position, and he reads the quarterback eyes, breaks on the football, and then does the smart thing. Gets down. Florida State has used its final timeout. Noah Brindice goes back on the field. Doug Johnson will be warmly greeted on the sideline today. As he returns, it was that pass to Quez Green for 62 yards that put it inside the Florida State 20. The clock at 47 seconds. The officials will not put the ball in play just yet. The Gator head coach talking with Noah Brindis at the 45-yard line just wants to calm everybody down. And the amazing thing, that is. If you're the, you are the Orange Bowl. Now, what are your thoughts? Ten and one North Carolina, ten and one Penn State, ten and one Tennessee, ten and one Florida State. Well, all I could say is that we've got our work cut out for us. <laughs> you know, we're going to have to go back and look at the polls and see exactly how they're ranked. Uh, of course, this takes away the shoe in of having Florida State there, but by the same token, it doesn't totally knock them out of the picture. We've got. Several teams that have great credentials. Brindis takes the knee. And by the time they put the ball in play, it'll probably require one more snap. 
if they get it in play before the 25 second mark as it appears that they will. There's Mr. Tubitz. He's got to be celebrating. Everybody in orange and blue is celebrating right now. Quest Green ran on the field, or rather Ian Skinner on the field. The clock winds down. Noah Brindice takes a knee and he takes the football with him. The Florida Gators are going to celebrate a tremendous, tremendous victory over the Seminoles of Florida State. They wanted to come in here having lost their SEC championship and deny Florida State a national title. They played a team that was number three in the nation in total defense in the top five in total offense. Alternated quarterbacks all day long net, and this is a game that Gator fans will talk about for a long, long time. Well, it's all about making plays. Offensively, the Gators made plays. Defensively, when they counted, they stood up and they made plays. You know, for a guy like Dwayne Thomas to be a senior playing his last ball game here at Florida Field, to come up with that interception, that's going to be something he'll remember the rest of his life, Larry. That's what clinched it. Number 52, a fifth-year senior from Jacksonville. Let's go down to Steve Babbitt with one of the heroes. Thanks, the guys. Day. You know what, uh, Doug? Congratulations. Talk about the game plan of the alternating quarterbacks. I think Noah, I think the whole game plan was go in there and have a good picture with the rotation of the quarterback. Uh, I don't know what to say. Everybody played well. The O-line blocked better than they've been blocked the whole year. I mean, they had the best defense line in the country, they, so they say. We held them out. I don't think we gave up a sack. to talk about that. <laughs> well, we just said, hey, let's play both of them. We had Jesse ready to play a little bit, but he really hadn't played all much this year. But uh, Doug and Noah were super. Fred Taylor, Quezzy Green, the whole team. One of the, one of the most dramatic games I've ever been playing. Kids played with a lot of heart, didn't they? They played with a lot of heart today. Oh, every, nothing went great at times. We missed about every kick, but somehow or another, God's still smiling on the Gators. All right, Coach, thanks very much. Tremendous down here. Uh, great, great emotions. Let's go back up to Larry and Nat. All right, thanks a lot, Steve Babbick. And you can tell the emotion in Doug Johnson. It was elation and it was relief. And he couldn't wait to share the credit with his offensive line, his runners, his receivers, and the defense. And Dwayne Thomas, a fifth-year senior, a guy you talk about as a solid player who does not make big plays. Guess what? He made the biggest play of the 1997 Gator football season. The players celebrating with the fans. The University of Florida insistent that there will be no storming of the field and no taking down of the goalposts. But what a moment for the Florida football team as they get the victory over Florida State by a score of 32 to 29. We'll return to the swap in just a minute. Florida Gator football on Sunshine Network is brought to you by First Union. When it comes to service, everything matters. Great Southern Wood, makers of Osmos pressure-treated pine. If it doesn't say Osmos on the yellow tag, you don't want it. Dairy Farmers, got milk? By the new Dodge, from cars to minivans to trucks, it's about change. The new Dodge. And by Shands Healthcare, improving health one person at a time. build your own library of official Gator video highlights. Start with number one for all, including Sugar Bowl and Celebration Highlights and the salute to Danny Werfel. Add Gators of the 90s, hosted by Steve Spurrier, or season highlight tapes from 1985 through the present. You can even watch the Gators on CD-ROM or listen to the one to remember, featuring yours truly, Mick Hubert. Choose any four items for only $69.95. Call 1-800-538-2666. What should you see when you're looking at the target? Do you pull with the left or push with the right? 
What's a good bunker shot sound like? The answers are in Golf Digest. No matter how well you play, you'll find tips and advice that will dramatically improve your game. Guaranteed. Want to know if you're good enough to carry a four iron? And what's so bad about a flying elbow? Do you want to know what the right grip feels like? Then you must subscribe to Golf Digest. Like to know which new ball can really take strokes off your game? Or where the most affordable new courses are? It's all in Golf Digest, the world's most widely read golf publication. You'll get 12 issues of Golf Digest for only $19.77, plus a full money-back guarantee if it doesn't improve your game. Subscribe now and get our valuable video. Hit it longer and straighter, absolutely free. Call 800-652-2112. That's 800-652-2112. They're singing, we are the boys, as well they should. The Florida Gators winners over Florida State, 32-29. This season has become a remarkable saga in the life of Noah Brindice. He's down on the field with Steve Bell. Tremendous effort by the quarterbacks. We talked to Doug Johnson. We talked to Coach D. Spurrier. Now Noah Brindice. Noah, how the heck did that work out there? That's your quarterback. Well, it was good because we had a plan every time we ran out on the field. Coach was able to tell us. You know, a particular thing, if they were blitzing, do this. If they weren't, do this. So it was better than, you know, being on the field the whole time because we weren't, aren't usually able to hear what Coach was saying. You think about this season, the way it's gone, it's almost like Doug Johnson, Noah Brandeis, let's put them together at one yeah. big game. Yeah, Doug played so ha I'm, I'm so happy for Doug. He played great. He's gotten such bad publicity lately. And Doug came out and showed tonight why he is going to be one of the best quarterbacks in the country next year. I'm so proud of our whole team, and it's just the best feeling right now. I'm going to go say hi to my dad. What, what a senior day gift, huh? Oh, this is the best way to end it. I couldn't have scripted anybody. Hey, it's only, it's only appropriate that he goes to talk to his father. Uh, a year ago, non-scholarship player, now the play of a lifetime. Let's go back upstairs. Okay, thanks a lot, Steve. And Nat Moore, for this team, the frustration, the disappointment of not defending their SEC championship means nothing at the moment. Yeah, but it couldn't be any sweeter than to beat your arch rival, <laughs> the Florida State Seminoles, the way they have done here today, and once again be able to brag and say, we took the national championship away from the Florida State Seminoles. And it appears that's exactly what happened, although we must remind everybody the loser of last year's Florida Florida State regular season finale won the national championship. We'll see how it all plays out as things go along. That's going to do it to it for us here at Sunshine Network.